A college football. Tonight's game features the ACC battle between the Cavaliers of Virginia and the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA 1, and USA 1 is taking charge. By America's number one imported beer, Hunter. The Cavaliers of the University of Virginia, 5-3 and three on the season, versus the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They are 1-7. and seven. Here come the Cavaliers to a chorus of boos at the home field of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. The Cavaliers are resurgent this year. 5-3. and three. They won their first four games before losing three on the road, and the Cavaliers are a team to be reckoned with this year. And now, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets with the Ramblin' Wreck leading the way. An age-old tradition here in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia, near downtown Atlanta, and the Yellow Jackets are trying to get victory number two tonight. Georgia Tech has had a tough time this year. They've had to play four SEC opponents, including the likes of Alabama and Tennessee and Auburn, and have yet to play Georgia. And, of course, a tough, murderous schedule in the ACC, too. Uh, Virginia, on the other hand, got off to a pretty good start, lost to some ACC opponents, and could have a winning season if they beat Tech tonight. Hi, everybody. It's Bob Neal, along with Tim Foley. And, Tim, we talked about Robert Levette, the great running back for Georgia Tech, and our tease before the broadcast and said he might play. What's the latest status? Well, Roberts had some injury problems, was hurt against Tennessee a couple of weeks ago, and Tech really needs him to make their offense go. Talking to Bill Curry just moments before the game, he said he would start. He's got a little bit of an ankle problem and a knee problem, but you're talking about a young man who scored more points than anybody in the country returning, rushed for more yards than anybody was coming back this year, so he's quite a player. Virginia, on the other hand, has got a, a more of a balanced attack. Shoots is throwing the ball well, and they've got Barry Word running with the football. They lost Antonio Rice, but Derek Jenkins is filled in well at fullback, and they've got a bevy of runners that really can make things go. Yeah, a couple of freshmen. Petty for Virginia is an outstanding freshman running back, wears number 11, and a fellow by the name of Corey Collier for Georgia Tech who returns kicks, and you'll get to see him early in the ball game. If he were statistically eligible for the NCAA, he doesn't have enough kickoff returns yet, he would be leading the nation in kickoff returns. Collier averages 37 yards a kickoff return. Both teams also have very good kickers. Kenny Stadlin for Virginia, Ron Rice for Georgia Tech, so the kicking game could play a big part here. One of the interesting things is we saw last year Virginia struggling to see them come back as well as they have under George Welsh. Must please a lot of folks in Charlottesville. Started the year 4-0. Four straight wins. George Welsh was saying when his football players would walk into the classroom the students would stand up and applaud. They weren't used to seeing that. Now they've lost three out of four. They lost three on the road. They haven't done very well on the road in the past. 14 out of 15 they've lost it but they feel like they can turn it around here tonight in Atlanta well it's a tough place for them to win Virginia has been playing Tech since 1965 Tech is 5 and 0 oh. Virginia has never defeated the Yellow Jackets we'll see what happens tonight live from Grant Field right after this the Jackets have played each other. All games have been here at Grant Field in Atlanta. Last year, a barn burner. We'd love to see an offensive showcase like that again tonight. Georgia Tech winning 38-32. Robert LeVette had 136 yards rushing. Virginia has, will receive tonight. And there you see number three, Malcolm Pittman. He is fourth in the nation in kickoff returns. And here is Tech's fine kicker, number seven, Ron Rice. He has the strong leg. He'll try to kick away from Pittman. This game is underway, in and out of the end zone, and Ron Rice has done it again, a non-returnable kickoff. It'll be a touchback out to the 20-yard line, first down 10, Virginia Cavaliers, and keeping the ball away from number three, Pittman is a smart idea on the part of the Yellow Jackets. Let's have a look at the offensive backfield for Virginia. Wayne shoots, completing 50% of his passes, intelligent and experienced. A youngster, Petty, had 182 yards last week. Excellent blocker, team leader Derek Jenkins is the fullback. First down, 10. Cavaliers. It's Petty, number 11. And he gets six yards as he breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Rob Horton, 52, and Harrison, 31, for Georgia Tech combining on the tackle. Here are the receivers. Nick Merrick, number 22, has 10 catches on the year. Billy Smith has 33, is a co-captain and a great leaper. And Billy Griggs, a very tough, big, pro-size tight end. There was a penalty marker on the play for Virginia. I don't know if it's for Virginia, penalty marker on the play. We'll get the announcement in a moment from the referee, who in tonight's game, by the way, is Jim Knight. He wears the white hat. Let's go. 
Virginia likes to run the ball between the tackles, Bob, and Georgia Tech is playing defense. First down. Georgia Tech is playing with their third string nose guard, Ivory Lee, who's a fine player. He's going to have to play over his head tonight against this, uh, these Virginia Cavaliers. You see the call was offside. That was before the snap. Automatic penalty. Run didn't count. It's first down five Cavaliers. So they're just going to do it again. This is Petty again. This time he gets the first down and about eight yards. Rob Horton makes the tackle for Georgia Tech's Yellow Jacks. That fella is 6'1", 205, a freshman from Annapolis, Maryland. Here's the offensive line for Virginia, and a pretty good one, although kind of a patchwork line, Tim. They've had some injury problems. By this time of the year, everybody's having injury problems. It is first down 10, Cavaliers. A slot right formation, two receivers off to the bottom of your screen. In motion is 11, Petty. Pitch back to 28, Derek Jenkins. Big hole. Westbrook hit him at the 49-yard line. And Derek Jenkins is down at the 47-yard line of Georgia Tech. Cavaliers running game looking mighty effective here in the opening moments from Grant Field. We're going to see this again. They were a little bit disappointed in Jenkins' performance up to this time, but he's really come on strong. Look at that movement. He's now over 1,000 yards in his career. That's three fine running plays in a row for Virginia. First down, 10. Cavaliers pro set formation. They play out of a multiple offensive set. That's 28. Jenkins again. This time, not as successful on the run. He does get to the 43-and-a-half-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. Number 56, the freshman nose guard, Ivory Lee, with the tackle. You see him right in the middle of that list of names. Pat Swilling, by the way, didn't start tonight. He has tonsillitis, number 99, and just a continuation of the injuries and problems with Georgia Tech's entire football team. Horton is the leader there, leading tackler on the team. Westbrook number 22, the leader in the defensive secondary for Georgia Tech. It is second down six. Cavaliers from the 43. Draw. Jenkins. To the 41, and down he goes, bringing up a third down. Ralph Malone, 95, the man starting in place of Swilling, who has the tonsillitis, makes the stop. See it again. Virginia's going to keep the ball on the ground as long as they have to, although they've got a quarterback in Wayne Shoots that is approaching a single-season passing yardage mark for Virginia. This is the first third-down conversion opportunity of the night for Virginia. They're at the 41-yard line of the Yellow Jackets, opening moments first quarter from Grant Field. Third and four. It's a first down for Petty. To the 35-yard line of the Yellow Jackets, 84, the defensive left end, and 95, the left outside linebacker, combined for the tackles for Georgia Tech. One thing that's a little unusual about that toss, most of the time when fans see the ball tossed, the play is designed to break outside. The ball is tossed by this George Welsh football team. Oftentimes, the play is designed inside the tackles. They're trying to draw the linebacker to the outside. First down, 10. First pass of the game. It's incomplete at the 24-yard line intended for number 22, Nick Merrick, the flanker. Toby Lance, number 34 for Georgia Tech, covering on the play. And there's Wayne Schutz. Had a fantastic year for him this year. Started out the year very strong. Losing Quinton Walker, who is a flanker for the Cavaliers. Uh, he broke his leg. Losing him has hurt Wayne a little bit because Walker was a big play character. Now they've just got good route receivers. Second down, 10 from the 35 of the Yellow Jackets. Pro set formation with the backs and an eye. And off goes to Petty. Petty hit at the line of scrimmage. Gets maybe two at the most. Ivory Lee, the freshman nose guard for Tech, number 56. A lot of pressure on that young man's shoulder. Six feet, 265, and he's going to have to contend with number 11, Petty, all night long. There you see 56, Ivory, in the middle of the Tech defensive huddle. He's talking to Bill Curry about... You see Petty running up there, and you're going to see Ivory Lee stepping in, making the play. Talking to Curry about him, and he said he's going to be a great player in the future. We hope the immediate future. There he is. Look at the pressure. 52, Garen, the center, who will be working on Ivory tonight. Third down. Nine. Shoots. Great defensive play in the backfield for Georgia Tech's Yellow Jackets. Toby Lance broke up the third down. It was intended for Merrick. The line of scrimmage is about the 34. It would be a 51-yard field goal attempt if they try to attempt that. We'll see what happens. 
They motioned Petty to the right side of your screen, attempting to get Georgia Tech into man-to-man -man coverage. Merrick was open early, but Lance made a nice move on the football, almost had himself an interception. Well, they've decided against the field goal attempt as you look at the good play by Toby Lance. Jeff Walker, number 13, the punter. Jack Westbrook is back on the 10 for Georgia Tech. Here's Walker, averaging 39.5 yards per punt. He's good inside the 10 there. It's into the end zone for a touchback, despite a valiant effort on the part of Virginia's Chris McMahon. And there's George Welsh. It'll be Georgia Tech football. First down, 10 at their 20. We'll be back to Grant Field in just a moment. 11-17 to go quarter number one, a scoreless football game. Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia Tech with the football. First down 10 from their 20. John Dewberry, number 11, the quarterback, swings it to the right side. That's Levette. There was a question as whether Levette could play tonight. They're going to lose on the play about two yards. Charles McDaniel with the tackle. And let's have a look at the backfield for Georgia Tech. John Dewberry, the quarterback, a transfer from the University of Georgia. Robert Levette. He has four touchdowns as Tech's leading rusher and receiver. And Ronnie Cohn, the fullback, has a hamstring, but he's an excellent team leader at the fullback position. There's the penalty. It's against Georgia Tech. Illegal use of hands. They're trying to get the ball to Levette on a quick screen. And uh, Virginia was in man-to-man -man coverage, and they had it read pretty well. They had folks the hands. in good position. Offense declined, second down. With the loss on the play, of course, Virginia declined the penalty. It will be second down and 12 now for Georgia Tech. And there are some uh, yellow jackets. Actually, the yellow jackets name came many, many years ago because the team wore yellow jackets. They weren't named after the insects. <laughs> second down. They're saying 11 now from the 19. Pitch to Levette. Gets a block. No more down at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down 11. That Virginia defense against the run looking pretty good. There are the receivers for Georgia Tech. You'll be seeing Daryl Wise in a moment, I'm sure. Daryl Norton has got seven catches, one TD at the split end position. And Kent Wisenhut, the real leader, leading receiver on the team. He's playing hurt tonight, Tim. He's playing with a broken hand. Uh, two things you want to watch. Is Levette going to be able to carry it through the night being injured? And can Wisenhut catch the ball with his hand taped up? Obvious kind of passing situation. Let's see what Tech does from their own 19. They decide to give it to Levette. Levette nowhere. Down at the 19. Charles McDaniel, the sophomore linebacker, number 30 for Virginia, makes the stop. And you'll be hearing the name of Charles McDaniel and seeing the number of 30 a lot tonight. We saw him in one of his first starts last year against Clemson. And although Virginia got blown out, you could tell that that young freshman was going to be a fine player. It's a punting situation for Georgia Tech. Ron Rice kicks and punts, number seven for Tech. And there he is now. Ron Rice has a 39.5 punting average, net of 37-1, one of the best in the nation. Tech covers punts well. Let's see how they do against Bart Farenholt, number 27 for Virginia. Farenholt, an outstanding punt returner. Average is nearly eight yards a return. There's Farenholt. Down he goes at the point of the reception. They say that his forward progress got to the 49-yard line. Good field position for the Cavaliers. Ralph Malone, 95 with the tackle for Georgia Tech. It was a 32-yard punt. One of the problems that Tech has been having is that they just haven't had enough offense being generated and their defense has been on the field too much. We have a timeout on the field. We'll be back in a moment to Grant Field in Atlanta. People that live in this part of the country are used to seeing that over the years right here in the heart of the campus, just on the near north side of Atlanta. Cavaliers ball, Howard Petty 11. Petty gets the first down and considerably more. He goes down at the 36-yard line. Rob Horton, number 52 for Tech. We were talking about the linebacker for Virginia. You're going to be hearing the name of Horton a lot, too. You see the guard pulling there, Bob Olderman, gets a nice block. Petty sets the block up well, dips inside, takes it back to the outside, and Tech needs to start tackling a little bit better at this point. First down, 10 Cavaliers from the 36 of the Yellow Jackets in motion to the bottom of your screen is 11 Petty. There's a quick opener up the middle, as Tim told you. That's the fullback carrying the ball. 
Jenkins, tackled by Roof and Horton. And watch them double-team this freshman, Ivory Lee, for Georgia Tech. This is one of the liabilities of being a nose guard. You've got an angle on you. There's number 76, Steve Carricker, blocking down, and they're just getting too much move movement right now on the nose guard, Ivory Lee. Four carries, 31 yards for Petty already tonight. Second down two from the 28 of Georgia Tech. Petty again. He got the first down, and he goes down at the 24-yard line. Ted Roof makes the stop for Georgia Tech, number 93. Sophomore from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Usually on a block like we just saw, we're going to see it again here. The idea is you want to double-team that man, knock him off the ball, and now it affects the pursuit coming from the offside. Usually they block in that nose man, and then one of those blockers will come off and pick up the linebacker that's trying to pursue. Running game effective for Virginia. They've only thrown two passes, both incomplete so far. Petty to run it again. Petty to the 21-yard line, and down he goes. Scoreless ball game, but it's been all Virginia so far. Tech was three downs and out on offense. Virginia had a good drive to open the game, got rid of the ball, stopped Tech, and now they've had their deepest penetration of this first quarter. Tom O'Brien has done a nice job with the offensive line for Virginia. He was with Welsh at Navy and has come to him, uh, come with him to Virginia and doing a super job. There's 12. Wayne shoots the senior to Petty, the freshman. Stop for a loss. Georgia Tech defense rose to the cage in there. Ivory Lee, that freshman nose guard, will be watching him tonight because of what Tim told you. Bill Curry's hope that he comes into his own in this game. <laughs> that time you saw Anthony Harrison blitzing into the picture. Lee makes a nice play. The weak safety's up there. They're going to have to stun around, and I'm sure Lick, Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, knows that they're going to have to stun around with the nose man and those inside linebackers. Another third down conversion for the Cavaliers. Third and eight from the 22 of Tech. Shoots, gets it away. Incomplete. Intended for tight end Billy Griggs. And Tech once again has stopped Virginia on downs, but now they may be within field goal range of number five, Kenny Stadlin. Virginia's fine field goal kicker. He is in the process of breaking a lot of records. As you take a look at that Virginia band, you'll see them at halftime. And if you haven't seen them before, don't miss them. <laughs> they are a sight to behold. Stadlin comes onto the field. There he is now, number five. A 5'8 sophomore from Hampton, Virginia. The next time he kicks a field goal, he will break the Virginia record of field goals in a season. He's tied now with 11. There's the kick. It is no good. He doesn't break the record on this boot. He misses the field goal attempt. And now the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, who dodged the bullet there, will take over on downs and a missed field goal. Virginia has done an excellent job of taking advantage of every scoring opportunity they've had this far. That's two they have lost so far as game. State Farm Agent Perry. 5, number 30, Charles McDaniel with the tackle. And there is an outstanding linebacker. <laughs> this guy's one of those nail chewers. He's just fierce. Sticks his nose right in there. He's only a sophomore, but the Cavalier defense kind of revolves around his leadership. Charles McDaniel. Second down eight. Yellow Jackets from their own 24. Pounds in at tailback this play, number 32. Newberry to throw. Has a man. It's complete to Daryl Norton for the first down. Out to the 35-yard line. Ray Daly covering. Daryl Norton, number one, the junior from Atlanta, Georgia. Farrell High School. Good hands, good concentration, a possession receiver. They haven't thrown the ball much to the outside, and this is something that you will not see much of. Dewberry dropping straight back. They like to get him outside the pocket and moving before he delivers the ball. Tech with the first breathing room they've had all night long. Changing sides is tight end Gary Wilkins going from the weak to the strong. Here's Cleve Pounds, the tailback, nothing going. He loses a couple. Running against Virginia is proving to be difficult. Russ Swan, 93, the Virginia linebacker. And it'll be up to these guys, Ivemeyer, Gwen, Waters, Capano, and Davis, to get that defense moved around for the Cavaliers. There's Bill Curry. Bill Curry had a fantastic career as a player with the center with Green Bay and then with Baltimore, coached in the pros, and he's got people excited about the program here, although he'd certainly like some more wins. Second down, 11, Georgia Tech from their own 34-yard line. In motion is 83, Stanfield. Newberry to throw, pressure, screen, it's set up well. 26 is Cone with the ball. Nice cut for Cone. He isn't going to get much out of it, though. 
a gain from the line of scrimmage of only three or four yards. The ball was popping loose. It remained, I believe, in the possession of Georgia Tech, however. And there's Ronnie Cohn, senior from Statesboro, Georgia, playing hurt tonight also, Tim. He's been out for a couple of games also. They've had, they lost their whole offensive backfield. Stu Rogers, a quarterback, they lost earlier in the year, and then they've been minus a couple of running backs. Great block there by Dean Waters coming over to help out, but Lyles forced that play back to the inside. Conversion for the Yellow Jackets. Third down, six from their own 39. Scoreless game. First quarter from Grant Field in Atlanta. Newberry. Incomplete. It was intended for number 89, Richard Salem. Daly was covering. Dewberry wisely just threw the ball away. Dewberry came in at quarterback for Tech after the first couple of games when Stu Rogers, the starter, injured his knee. And did a great job in the first half against North Carolina and led him to a 21 to nothing lead. There's George Wells. George, we're talking to George today, and uh, one thing that you can be sure of that the doesn't get any less anxious as you spend more time in coaching. I think George ate about 20 tums. Number seven, Ron Rice, 32-yard punt last time. I think the longer you coach, Bob, the more you realize the things that can go, go wrong. Pretty good punt by Rice. It's driving Farenholt to his 21-yard line where he signals fair catch. And now Georgia Tech has moved Virginia back to the 20 for the first time since the opening kickoff. And the Cavaliers come back out. A 40-yard punt for Ron Rice, the punter and kicker for the Yellow Jackets. 4.59 to go. First quarter scoreless game. Radio Network, as he says it, Al Seraldo, his 30th year broadcasting the Yellow Jackets, one of the class men in the nation in broadcasting, and also one of the unique flavors of college football is to listen to the local voice of the football team, and Seraldo is indeed that. We'll be listening to him a little later on our telecast tonight. We're going to just join Al in progress. I think you'll enjoy it. 29 more send four word in the backfield for Cavaliers, first and 10 from their own 21. That's Word with the ball. He's the fastest man on the team. Good gain out to the 35-yard line. First down, Jack Westbrook with a tackle. Always a good first down call. Screen pass, defense usually playing a zone. We're going to see this one. Getting the ball out in the flat to a man with a lot of speed and with a lot of elusiveness. And that was Dante Jones coming up to turn the play in. Nice play by Virginia. First down, 10 Cavaliers from their 35 from Grant Field in Atlanta. Fake shoots the throw. It's almost picked off. It was intended for 21 Billy Smith, who's the leading receiver of this team. And you won't see Billy Smith drop many passes. The senior from Norristown, Pennsylvania. You talk to the Virginia coaches, and they tell you, if you get it close to Billy Smith, who is usually their primary target, he's going to pull it in. Lance Westbrook, Ted Roof all around the ball, trying to pick it off for Tech to no avail. Second down, 10 Cavaliers from their own 35. Quick handoff to number 29, Steve Morse, the junior from Mobile, Alabama. Morse, the backup fullback behind Derek Jenkins. I'm sure the defensive coaches from Tech have to be concerned about Smith, and he'll probably be seeing some double coverage tonight, and that's going to leave Toby Lance man-to-man -to -man on Nick Merrick. Now, Merrick is 6'5", Lance is 5'9". It'll be an interesting story to follow there. Third down five, Cavaliers. They are one out of three on third down conversions thus far. With a tailback, number four, Barry Word, short of the first down. The Tech Yellow Jacket is there. Number 46, Sammy Huntley, the defensive end, a senior, making the stop for the Yellow Jackets. Penalty marker down. The other third and long possessions, they've tried to throw the football. This time they change it up, go with the draw. Tech does a nice job of shutting it down. You saw the yellow flag come into the picture. It's holding against Virginia. Tech has to make the decision of taking a 10-yard loss for Virginia or just taking the ball. I have a feeling they'll decline it. Holding, offense, decline, fourth down. So Jeff Walker comes in to punt along with the punting unit. Jack Westbrook will go back. There's George Wells right now, pacing nervously on the sideline, but... What a job he did at Navy, and what a job he is in the process of doing at the University of Virginia. These guys won their first four games this year. 
There's Walker's punt. Westbrook's a good one on the punt returns. Turns it right upfield. Doesn't get much this time. Out to the 20, and down he goes. Tackle made by number 89, Stuart Mines, a freshman from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 3.35 to go in the first quarter. We have a scoreless football game here. Tim, I'm reminded of two heavyweight boxers kind of slugging it out, feeling each other out in the opening rounds. But Georgia Tech seems to be getting its feet on the ground a little bit. And uh, I'm sure Ivory Lee is... See, they usually tell you, Bob, to grab the grass on that double team. Now, it's tough on this AstroTurf because there's no grass to grab. And the idea is you just want to make a pile. Don't let them move you out. He's doing a little bit better job. Hope you'll join us for that Hall of Fame Bowl, December 22nd. Virginia's got a shot at it. They keep winning. Never in history has Virginia been in a bowl game. They're hoping for one this year. Oh, look at that. That is number 25, Corey Collier, the Tech freshman running back who had such a great game last week. Corey Collier came into play for the injured Robert LeVette and really set him on fire. He has a sore shoulder tonight, but watch this. Prior to the snap, the tight end shifted into the sideline. The strong safety for, for Virginia followed him in there, and then Georgia Tech ran it back to the wide side of the field. They found a hole. He's only 5'7", had 86 yards last week. Hand off to the fullback. I believe that's Glanton. Keith Glanton, number 28, the junior from Villarica. That is exactly who it is. Glatton will be spelling Ronnie Cohn a lot tonight because Cohn has the hamstring. Collier will be spelling Levette because of Levette's Levet sore ankle and knee. This is where a team like Georgia Tech is hurt. Late in the year, they've lost some people to injuries. Uh, the big successful programs have a lot of folks that they can throw in there, and Georgia Tech's just a little thin in the ranks. Second down five from the 38-yard line. Yellow Jackets ball. Dewberry on the draw. He gives it to Glatton. Glatton with the first down and a little bit more to the 49-yard line. The first penetration of Virginia territory. 27 Fahrenheit and 8 Ray Daly with the stop for the Cavaliers. Nice job of running by Keith Glatton. He stopped behind the line of scrimmage by Scott Urch. You're going to see it. Urch coming to your picture right there, but he shakes him off. Russell it down the road. That's rambling it right down the road there for Jordan Tech. Slot white formation, Yellow Jackets, at the 49 of the Cavaliers. Here's the option. Collier. Look at the speed to the 42 to the 41 and a half yard line. Bart Barinholt with a tackle. And that option is an extra added attraction of this Georgia Tech offense when Dewberry's the quarterback. Talking to Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator for G Virginia before the game, they expected the option. They haven't been very effective in defensing it. Wizenhut got an excellent block that sprung that one. By the way, Dewberry can run, too. He's averaging nearly four yards a carry when he keeps it. Second down, two Yellow Jackets at the 41 of Virginia. Fumble on the snap. Mix up there between Waters and Dewberry, apparently, as you look at the Tech cheerleaders. Georgia Tech has played almost everyone tough for the first three quarters of the game. Dewberry just doesn't hang in there, never just makes connections with the center. And they've had real problems in the second part of the third quarter and in the fourth quarter. They've just got worn down. Their defense has been on the field too much. They haven't had a lot of these long drives. Third down for Yellow Jackets at the 43 of Virginia. Yellow Jackets 0 for 2 on third down conversion. Dewberry. Everybody ran left. He avoids that tackler. And down he goes. Tough hit, short of the first down. Dewberry to the 41. Scott Urch, the 250-pound defensive right tackle, hit John Dewberry. They had everybody down to the bottom of your screen, both wide receivers, the tight end, and the running back. They were just trying to flood that zone area. Virginia did a nice job of adjusting. Dewberry tries to take it in. Takes a real shot there. There's John Dewberry, transfer from Georgia, redshirt in 1982, replaced Stu Rogers when he hurt his knee. He's a sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia, went to Metter High School. Here's Ron Rice. He's from Lithonia, Georgia, senior. Fourth down two from the 41. Rice pretty good at getting this ball inside the 20. Let's see how he does this time. Gets a good bounce. Tech's around the ball. They're going to down it at the four. 
Ron Rice, excellent job. Reggie Rutland did a good job of downing it. Only 37 yards, but very effective punting by Ron Rice. Bob, nobody's on the board yet, but field position has certainly changed. Virginia drove the ball down the field in their first two possessions. They started from their own 49, the third possession, and now they're backed up. So Georgia Tech has done a nice job. Cavaliers, as you can see on our wide shot, having to huddle in their own end zone on the north end of Grant Field here in Atlanta, Georgia, the campus of Georgia Tech, first down 10 from the fourth. Hand off to the fullback. Steve Morse gets only a yard or two. Ted Roof led the way for the dark-clad Yellow Jackets. Shoots has had a couple of long throws this year. This is the time when you don't mind putting it up in the air. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll see if Shoots throws it. We'll check on the penalty when we return. Positive, but trying to overhear <laughs> the sideline the conversation with the referee. Illegal participation could include a lot of things. For instance, if a tackle comes in as an extra tight end and doesn't change jersey numbers, as an example, and Tech is in the process of doing that some, as is Virginia. Pretty equal time of possession, equal score, too. It is nothing-nothing here as we start the second quarter. Steve Morris, the fullback, goes down, very little gain. And Bill Curry holding up well under some very tough pressure in his fourth year here at Tech. He's getting a lot of positive things done here with the program. And, uh, we talked to Homer Rice before the game. He's the athletic director here. Very happy with the job that Curry is doing. Obviously, would like to have more wins, but they see the progress. Eight starters who were starters at the beginning of the year have been knocked out of action due to injuries for Georgia Tech. That's tough to overcome. 29, Steve Morris with the ball for Cavaliers. He gets another first down out to the 36-yard line. Goes Morris, Rob Horton, and Reggie Rutland making the tackle for the Yellow Jackets. And this Cavalier running game looking pretty darn good. Petty has 37 yards, Jenkins 35, and Morse 22. See in the secondary adjust to that motion. Toby Lance comes up, turns the play in, but a nice job of blocking by that Virginia line. They're doing a super job of just sticking with their men. First down 10. Barry Word. Tackled by Westbrook. Morris did an excellent. Excellent job of trying to cut off Jack Westbrook, but Westbrook beat the block, got upfield inside the linebacker. Sometimes <clears throat> the safety will support from the outside. Sometimes it'll come from the inside. That time Westbrook slipped inside to make the stop. Second down eight from the 38-yard line. Shoots the quarterback. Very word, number four at the 40 at the 49, tackled by Rutland. The Yellow Jackets read this play well. Little fake boot and thrown it back to Word, trying to spring him in the open field. They just need to tackle better. Roof comes up and misses. Jones missed. He was being blocked, but that's a play you have to make. First down 10 from the 50 just inside Virginia territory. Word. Jones with a tackle. The sign of a good blocking offensive line, the kind of running game that Welsh has established, it's a lot to do with the ability of those offensive linemen to keep their hat on the defensive person. A lot of linemen do a nice job of that first blow, but then they don't bring their feet with them. And the defensive man escapes. Second down, seven from the 47. Incomplete. Intended for Smith, 21. Georgia Tech doing a nice job in pass coverage. Shoots has really had no one open. He's got a little bit of pressure early, too. Not really stepping up into the pocket yet. I'm sorry, Bob. He's done a nice job of coming along. He, I don't think they could have beat North Carolina State without him and played a nice game against Duke. Third down seven from the 47. Incomplete. Intended for Petty. A 
time, Georgia Tech went to a little bit of pressure. Horton coming up the middle. You can see Horton coming up the middle here. He's going to knock shoots in the, on the ground after the ball is away. Walker into punt. Fair catch by Westbrook at the nine. Old George Welch, he doesn't look real happy. He's got his team running. First down, 10 from the nine. Tech's ball. Corey Collier to the 21. Tackle by 27, Farrell. They certainly have been excited about the progress of this young man. 86 yards and 14 carries. Also had three kickoff returns for 134 yards. Excellent quickness and acceleration. First down 10 from the 21-yard line. Newberry. Out of bounds at the 23-yard line, chased out by 96 Wiley. Little fake on the sprint draw, rolling to the wide side of the field, trying to find Wizenhut along the sideline. Mark Wiley, John Muntz. Virginia's had a real problem at defensive end. They've lost several defensive ends. And the fellows are doing an excellent job backing them up. Lester Lyles is the leader in that secondary, and he's going to have to make some big plays for that Virginia defense. Second down eight from the 23-yard line. Georgia Tech's ball. 11.56 to go first half, scoreless game. There's a draw to the tailback. Down goes Corey Collier. Edgar Davis just did an excellent job that time on Dean Waters. Watch the penetration here. Water sets up, they set up pass, and they want to take him one way or the other. Davis fights his way through the block, and it's a tackle for loss. Third down 10 from the 21. comes loose. Number 90 with his hands around him was Scott Urch. Ball remained in possession of Georgia Tech at their own 11. Dewberry is looking for Antonio McKay deep. They're trying to go for it all right here, but as he sets up the throw, Scott Urch does a nice job of yanking him down to the ground. They almost lose the football. Dewberry, three out of four, passing the ball for 15 yards. No success that time due to the sack. They almost had to change their style of offense when uh, Dewberry came. He's not the thrower that Rodgers was, but he's a better runner. Here's the good option quarterback. Excuse me, Tim, by Rice. Ball picked up on the near sideline by number eight. Ray Daly, who was the wingman over on the left side. We're taking a timeout here with 10.27 to go. In the second quarter, scoreless game from Grant Field. In three, as you've come to expect in Divisions 1A and 1AA, join the colorful traditions at over 100 Division II and nearly 200 Division III NCAA colleges that sponsor football. You'll be glad you did. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. First down 10, Virginia at the 34 of Tech. Horton at the 31. Petty does an excellent job of setting up his blockers. See the ball tossed. Now watch him set it up. Takes it upfield to try to suck those defenders inside. Westbrook's fighting a blocker, but he still scoots out around the outside. Horton does a wonderful job in pursuit. Collars him on the sideline. Second down, seven from the 31. Number 11, 
Petty again. Knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line near the first down stick. Nice block by Randy Brookshire. And he's an interesting story, too, isn't he, Bob? He's got a, this guy's got a reading disability. He can't really read very well. He's got an IQ of 150. They have to read books to him, but he's got tremendous retention. Not quite enough for the first down. It'll be third down and just inches for the Cavaliers. The ball at the 25. 10-14 to go, first half, scoreless game. Petty gets the first down to the 20 and a half yard line. Tackle there by 52 Horton. And a good job by Brookshire and Carricker. Carricker, the right guard, is replacing Jim Huddleston, who's out with an ankle injury. You see Bob Olderman pulling just a little short trap. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets need a big play on defense for right now. First down 10 to the 21 yard line. It's complete to number 22, Nick Merrick. He's tripped up by Toby Lance and goes out of bounds at the four-yard line. Lance has done an equitable, uh, an adequate job filling in at cornerback. He's a free safety that's playing cornerback because of injuries, giving a Merrick a little bit too much room in this part of the field. But again, Merrick is 6'5", Lance 5'9". First down goal from the four, scoreless game, 9.34 to go, second quarter. Ball's loose. Looks like Tech has it at the six. Now battle for the ball. They say it belongs to the Yellow Jackets. Glenn Spencer, number 94. Well, that's the big play we were talking about them needing. Big hit on the goal line. Looked like Ken Parker came out of there with the ball. I think you're right, though, Bob. I think it was Spence on the hit. Spencer. First down and 10 from the six-yard line for the Yellow Jackets. There's Corey Collier gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Now let's listen to Al Seraldo, the voice of the Yellow Jackets. Here at the handoff to Jenkins, and Jenkins fumbles the football. Let's see who got it. Well, Tex got it, I believe. Second down, 10, Yellow Jackets from their six. That's the fullback, Ronnie Cohn. He fumbles the ball. Tech maintains possession out at the 18, 17-yard line. Almost a big play for the Virginia defense. Cohn breaks the tackle of Edgar Davis here. And then puts the ball on the ground. Whoa, whoa, nice hit there by Lester Lyles. Big play secondary safety for Virginia. First down, 10 tech from the 17. That was 14 wise who recovered the ball. Timeout call by Dewberry. 8.21 to go, second quarter, scoreless football game from Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia. We'll take a timeout and we'll be right back. Tonight's teams, a check on the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Both players will receive a Chevrolet MVP certificate acknowledging their outstanding efforts on the field tonight. Georgia Tech defense so far has come up with the plays when they've needed them. Offense needs to establish some something positive at this point. First down, 10 from the 17. Dewberry to throw. Darrell Wise complete. 
to the 39-yard line. Tech first down to Darrell Wise. I think you have some confusion in the Virginia secondary. There was no one close to Darrell Wise. Dewberry unloads the ball long. It's a little bit under throw. Baron Holt almost gets there to make the play. The big play for Jordan Tech offense. First down, 10 for the 39, 44-yard pass completion. And off to the fullback, 26 is Ronnie Cohn. Cohn to the 32. Tackle made by 26 lines. Ivan Meyer and Derek Gwynn, nice job of moving David Bond off the line of scrimmage there. Cohn takes the ball. Cuts it back to the wide side of the field. Searching for that open area. Second down three from the 32. Corey Collier to the 25 and a half yard line. Tripped up by number two, Rock Swing. They're shifting the tight end back to the into the sideline, getting Wizen Hut. They're outnumbering Virginia back into the short side of the field. Bob Sweeney, the weak safety, comes over and puts the high stop on Collier. First and ten from the 26-yard line. Tech on the drive. Scoreless game, second quarter, 6.56 remaining. Corey Collier twisting his way to the 21 and a half yard line where the tackle is made by 93 Swan. This is like so many pro programs. Georgia Tech is like a couple of teams that we've seen this year, Bob. They've got a lot of freshmen playing. And he's got a lot of great players that if they can stay injury free and continue to, to grow in the fashion they're growing now, this is going to be a fine football team in a couple of years. Second down five from the 21. Cohn and Collier, 26 and 25 in the backfield. down and then caught after it was popped up in the air by Derek Gwen, the left guard. It was batted by Ron Mattis, the defensive left tackle number 98. See Wizen Hut shifting. Now what's happening there, the strong safety, Lester Lyles, has to shift over with him. And it just takes his mind off what he's doing. Now Wizen Hut working back across the coverage and was open, but Mattis knocked the ball out of the air. Seven from the 23. Yellow Jackets in Cavalier territory. Wise in motion. This is Ronnie Cohn. To the five-yard line goes Ronnie Cohn, the fullback, tackled by 25, Howard Lewis. Derek Quinn got as strong a block as I've ever seen on that play. He buried the nose guard that created that tremendous gap. And Cone's got the super speed, 4-5 speed. Excellent quickness for a big man. First down goal, Tech from the five-yard line of Virginia. Glanton, 28 and 25, Collier, the running backs. That's Corey Collier. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. time the Yellow Jackets have been close. It's their first scoring opportunity and they take advantage of it. They get into the end zone. Ron Rice for the point after. It's good. 5-13 to go. First half. Georgia Tech leads seven to nothing, and here's how Al Seraldo, the voice of the Yellow Jackets, described the touchdown. Ron Wilson in motion to the left, the handoff to Corey Collier, off tackle, Collier spins in the end zone, touchdown Georgia Tech. They can't, him, this kid can spin around off tackler after tackler. Great acceleration, that was a terrible back up. Yard 
yard scoring drive. There's the Rice kickoff coming down in the end zone to number three, Malcolm Pittman. Fourth in the nation in kickoff returns, decides to touch it down very close to the end zone line, but it will be a touchback. First down, 10 Virginia at the 20. There's the scoring drive. It took four minutes and 14 seconds. The key play, a 44-yard pass reception by Darrell Wise from quarterback John Dewberry. Nice job of mixing the pass and the run. The first sustained drive that Georgia Tech has had all night, and they take advantage of it, get seven points on the board. There goes 22, Merrick. Howard Petty, the tailback. Driven out of bounds. At the 23-yard line, 31 Harrison with the tackle. Virginia hasn't really had much problem moving the ball tonight. They've got good time of possession and they've got good average per game per play. Good game, average gain per play, but they just haven't been able to capitalize when they got down there. Missed field goal, the fumble. From the 23, second down seven Cavaliers. Shoots to throw. Almost picked off. Intended for number 21, Billy Smith. You see a look at the secondary. Dante Jones is the one that's going to knock this ball down. It's kind of in man-to-man -man coverage. He's trying to hit Billy Smith to turn in right in the middle of your picture. And Smith, who's hanging around the line of scrimmage, or Jones, reaches his hand up, picks it out of the air. Third down seven from the 23. Derek Jenkins, the fullback. He's tackled at the 27-yard line by 93 Rook. Big hole there when Jenkins got the football. Georgia Tech doing a nice job of reacting to the ball, getting out of their back pedal and coming back up into it. A lot of room initially, but they close the gap in a hurry. Jeff Walker punting the ball away. Westbrook is going to catch it back inside his 25 and try to return this one. Down at the 29-yard line goes Westbrook. Tackle made by 99, Edgar Davis. There's the punter, Jeff Walker. It's a 50-yard punt. Our next game will come Saturday night at 8.05 Eastern Time from Nashville. Kentucky's Wildcats and the Commodores of Vanderbilt. Randy Jenkins and high-stepping George Adams in the offense for Kentucky. And, of course, Kirk Page, fifth in the nation in total offense, the great quarterback for Vanderbilt. And the number one receiver in the nation, Keith Edwards, plays for the Commodores. The best back in the game for Georgia Tech. It is first down 10 from the 34-yard line. Wise in motion. Not much going that time. Hand off to the fullback, Ronnie Cohn, number 26. Virginia has been a defense so far this year that has paid a lot of attention to the field. They usually zone the field. They're changing it up tonight because they've been hurt with runs back into the sideline. That was 28 Glanton carrying the ball, the backup fullback to Cohn. He's still in there, Glanton. Second down eight from the 36. Hand off to Levette. Down he goes at the 39-yard line. Gain of two. Tackled by 26 Lyles. Lyles has made some big plays for him on defense, Bob. Returned an interception for a touchdown against North Carolina State that sealed a victory. And he's replacing Rich Riccardi, who was the starting safety, but he's really made a lot of progress. Third down five, Yellow Jackets from their 39. Dewberry for his seventh pass attempt of the night. It's complete. That's 28 Latin. To the 30. One man to beat. Needs a block. He gets it. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Keith Glatton. <laughs> 61 yards on the pass reception. Dewberry to Glatton. set up in excellent fashion. Dewberry does a nice job of faking it, lays it out there in style to Glanton, and a nice block by Tony Capano that sprung him, and now it's all Glanton. Beats that one-arm tackle and 
Now he's all alone. Daryl Norton hustles downfield, is able to pick off that defender, Ray Daly, and Glenn goes into the end zone. Point after is good by Ron Rice. He's now 15 out of 15 on point afters for the season. 3-11 to go in the first half. Georgia Tech has taken a 14-0 lead over the Cavaliers of Virginia from Grant Field in Atlanta. Now let's listen to the Wise voice of Georgia to Tech. Back to pass, Dewberry. Looking. Pressure out of the pocket. Going. Complete to Levette at the 20 or 35. He's at the 40. He's at the 45. Nine at the 40. of Al Seraldo. There's the score. And it certainly was beautiful. That's just how you diagram them on the board. Linemen getting out in front of the play, doing a nice job. Receivers hustling downfield. Keith Clinton. It's his second touchdown this year. Number three, Pittman. Number four, Word for Virginia. John Rice to kick off. Number seven. Soccer style of kicker. Pittman. Out to the 16 and a half yard line goes Malcolm Pittman. A junior from Baltimore, tackled by Mark Hogan, number 36. Coming up at halftime, we'll be bringing you another in our weekly series sponsored by Chevrolet, the making of an All-American, the Virginia Pep Band and Georgia Tech's Band, halftime performances, a special report from Craig Zager on the preparation required by announcers for the telecast, a news update from CNN Headline News, and of course the highlights from the first half of tonight's game, so be sure and stay with us during all the halftime activities. There's the man shaken up for Georgia Tech. Seems to be okay. Number 96 is John Clare, a sophomore from Cincinnati. Rutland being helped off the field, too. They can't afford to lose another man in the secondary. They've already got a patchwork secondary. I'm sure they're concerned about that. Smoots would be the backup, but his ankle is hurt, hurting him, and they'll probably have to go with Sammy Lilly in there at this point. George Welsh. First quarter developed the way that he thought it would, except they didn't have any points, but they had they were moving the ball nicely. Now all of a sudden he's behind 14 to nothing. First down 10 Virginia from the 17. Slot left formation, 305 to go in the half. And off to the fullback. Good yardage up the middle to number 29, Steve Morse. Garen, Carricker, and Olderman once again getting, getting good movement. That time Garen had Ivory Lee all by himself. Did a fine job. Created the gap. Second down two from the 25. Cavaliers. Play fake. Shoots going long. Looking for Ferguson, Kevin Ferguson, the freshman, incomplete at the 30, covered by 34 Lance. See Toby Lance backpedaling on the bottom of your pay, uh, screen on the page. Down there, turns and runs for the ball. Often if you can just get a little bit of contact just to throw that receiver off a split second because that's a timing pattern and as the ball's in the air, if you can slow him up just a tad, it'll be enough to break up the timing. Third down, two from the 25, Virginia. That's Word. Got close to the first down, but he is stopped about a yard short. 84, Parker with the stop, along with 39, Pike. We're going to take a look at Rob Horton here. Horton slides to the left, always staying behind the ball. Puts his head right in on the ball and drives him back. Big third down play. 
It'll be fourth down and short yardage. There's a timeout on the field as the trainers go onto the field with 2.19 to go in the first half. Georgia Tech leading by a score of 14 to nothing. This telecast authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the National Collegiate Athletic Association. It's intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game, in whole or in part, without the express written consent of the NCAA and WTBS-TV, is prohibited. The announcers for this event, employed by the Turner Broadcasting System, Incorporated. Horton's been a three-year starter for Georgia Tech, and he's the type of guy that just leads through his examples. Not real emotional and not very talkative, but gets around the football. Punting situation, Jeff Walker into punt. This will be his fifth punt of the night, averaging 40 yards. Westbrook back to take it at his own 32. Westbrook from the 40. Out of bounds at the 48-yard line of Virginia. Good field position for Georgia Tech. 35-yard punt by Jeff Walker. The tackle made by Steve Horse, 29. Join us for the Hall of Fame Bowl, live December 22nd at 8.05 Eastern Time from Legion Field in Birmingham. Teams will be selected on the NCAA telecast live on November 19th. First down, 10 Tech from the 48-yard line of Virginia. Tech leading 14-0. Hand off to the tailback. That's Levette. Gets to the 46-yard line. Tackled by 98, Mattis. Shifted that tight end right before the ball was snapped. Trying to work it back into the short side of the field. Mattis beat the block and made the tackle. Time remaining in the half. Tech leading 14-0. Second down, 9 from the 47. Gary Wilkins, the tight end, shifting before the snap. Play fake. Newberry throws it complete to the man who was in motion. Gary Wilkins, the tight end. Ray Daly, number eight, with a tackle. Those fellas alternate by series. Wisenhut and Wilkins. Wisenhut's a little bit better blocker, but they're both fine receivers. A little play action. Running the flanker straight down the field. You just find... Wilkins in that open area on the sideline. Daly makes a stop. First down, 10 Tech from the 30-yard line of Virginia. Flies in motion. That's Levesque. Trapped at the 30-yard line. No gain. Tackle made by 96, Mark Wiley. on the field, Georgia Tech. Excuse me, Tim. Go ahead. 59 seconds left in the half. They want to talk this one over. As you could see on that last play, watching the defense of Virginia, they were coming. They feel like they need to cause something to happen. Just to be a little bit anxious here, they certainly won't, don't want to go down by any more than 14 going into halftime. Georgia Tech used their final timeout. Virginia has all three remaining. Tech leading 14 to nothing. 59 seconds remaining in the half. Bill Curry's got a sign in his locker room that I thought was kind of in interesting. He said, an instantaneous response to a specific stimuli. Bill Curry right there, he's trying to train his players to the point where they don't have to think. They don't have to wonder what they're supposed to do on this specific play or if their man does this or that. They see it and they react. I think it's a Marine Corps saying, isn't it, Bob? Yeah, maybe. There goes Dewberry back into the game. His stats up to this point. One touchdown pass. That went to Keith Glanton, the fullback. Second down, 10 from the 30. Georgia Tech ball. Officials making Tech and Virginia wait until the elapsed time of the timeout, which is a minute and a half, elapses before they can get the ball back in action. are happy here in Atlanta. They kind of starved for a victory. They thought this was going to be the year for Tech. They had a great year last year, but as you mentioned in the pregame show, Bob, they've had a, an unbelievably tough schedule. They, they have a tougher schedule than anybody that plays in the SEC. They reset the clock. Instead of 59 seconds remaining in the half, they're 
is one minute plus three seconds remaining. Second down, 10 from the 30 of Virginia. Tom Stanfill in motion. Down goes Dewberry at the 39, 98 Mattis with the tackle. No huddle, Tech lining up, third down, 10. They spotted at the 36 yard line. Screen, that's 28 Blanton. Blanton down at the 33. What do you think? They're down to 33 here, Robert. Field goal time. 27 seconds remaining, and they bring in Ron Rice from the 40. It'll be an exactly 50-yard kick. He has a 54-yarder from earlier in the year. He's kicked four straight field goals. Let's see if he can make it five in a row. It is no good with six seconds remaining in the half. Virginia will take over at the 33-yard line of Virginia and have time for one more play before the half comes to an end. Tech leading 14-0. But Bill Curry had an interesting story on the kicker, Bob. Why don't you tell folks about that? Well, Ron Rice uh, had a slump at the beginning of the year, and uh, Curry had him connect up with his old kicking buddy Jan Stenerud at Green, Green Bay. Stenerud chatted with him, and after that, he came into the game and kicked a 54-yarder. Or make him a coach someday. One play is all that Virginia will get off here. Six seconds remaining in the half. They'll probably just throw it up for grabs. Let's see what happens. It's almost intercepted. Incomplete at the 14-yard line. It was intended for Petty. Marvin Carolina was back there along with Anthony Harrison. The tech lead is 14 to nothing as the half comes to an end from Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia. Back with halftime activities right after this. Allen is at it again this year. Ten touchdowns, 907 yards, and five 100-yard games. And before the year is over, Allen will probably break FSU's all-time rushing record. West Virginia's head coach, Don Nealon, knows what it takes to be an All-American. And he says number 26 has it. Greg Allen, for my money, is one of the great running backs in the country. He has this great thighs that breaks the tackles. He has the great speed that can take an average play the distance. And uh, I know from the Gator Bowl a year ago, he's certainly an All-American. The list of accomplishments for Allen seems endless. He holds 15 Seminole records, is tied for two, and closing in on three more. Allen is a tremendous all-purpose runner whose specialty is getting the ball into the end zone. Allen has scored 34 touchdowns in his career, and he's only a junior. As opponents who have tried to catch him know, Allen is also a track star who runs a 10-8, 100-meter dash and has long jumped 24 feet 5 inches. He's 6 feet tall, 200 pounds, from Mill in Florida, our TBS Chevrolet All-American at running back, Florida State's Greg Allen. On the field now, the University of Virginia Fighting Cavaliers, indoor-outdoor precision, marching pep band, Chowder Society Review Unlimited. That's what they call the Virginia Marching Band, 150 students, entirely student-run, by the way. They say they stress humor from current events, college life, and just about anything else. The students come from all areas of academic interest. They have only one music major in the band. Let's watch. ...is an outstanding 1100. Admission directors for the University of Georgia are also ecstatic with their scores, claiming that their average score is only one off of Georgia Tech's. Okay, band, take off that one.
thought that the pep band is unable to march in precise formation. Not true. Watch now as we present our variation of a precision drill. That's right, folks. Back from popular demand, the Black and Decker Precision Drill. activities after this message from the NCAA. And don't forget, we'll be back with a halftime performance of the Georgia Tech Band after these messages. Five-year passes are optional. Georgia Tech, Bucky Johnson.
Well, we're doing a home game in Atlanta this week, but we won't be home for long with our TBS football crew. Tomorrow we're on the road for Saturday's game at Vanderbilt in Nashville. Craig Sager reports on how we prepare for our busy schedule. Didn't tip it off, but when the when the punter threw the ball, I was prepared enough to say, that guy was a former high school quarterback. That Glenn Harper, a high school quarterback and an excellent athlete, completes the pass to John Breland and the Cougars with some trickery. Keep it alive. After Bob calls the play, Tim, who is a former Miami Dolphins defensive back, is prepared to analyze it. You see Fulcher in the center of your screen as the action, as the ball goes to the weak side of the formation, he runs up and covers that short area there, what's referred to as the flat area. What you want to do is locate a receiver and get in front of him. While Tim and Bob talk about the plays, it's up to Mike Lardner, the producer, to make sure we have highlights. But as always, you must be prepared for the unexpected. The biggest fear is to have the star player as we did in Florida State against Louisville, uh, hurt his shoulder in the first series of downs and have to play with a second-team quarterback against a very good football team in Florida State. Um, the one thing we want is a tie ball game going into the fourth quarter. We're never guaranteed of a throwing finish, but when it happens, we like to be ready. Here's Willem into the end zone, touchdown to Bird! 14 seconds to go in the game, and our most valuable player, Steve Bird, catches the touchdown pass, his sixth TD pass of the year, his eighth catch of the night, and look at the crowd from Eastern Kentucky. And when the game's over, it's time to bid farewell to one area of the country and get ready for the next. Be sure to join us Saturday night as we head to Knoxville for that SEC matchup between the Tigers of LSU and the Volunteers of Tennessee. Recovered, stopping the Virginia drive, and it seemed to pump life into Tech. John Dewberry hits receiver Daryl Wise, 44 yards on this play. Tech comes right back. Ronnie Cohn takes it 18 yards. The injured fullback takes it to the five, and the freshman, Corey Collier, five-yard touchdown run, 7 to nothing. Georgia Tech. Dewberry was not finished for the half, though. He comes back late in the second quarter. Looking for fullback Keith Glanton this time. Dewberry on the screen to the right side. It goes 61 yards, and Georgia Tech leads at halftime by a score of 14 to nothing. Big plays for a sputtering Yellow Jacket offensive football team. I'm sure it's the kind of thing that will boost the morale of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Tim Foley, interesting first half. It really was, and that's what Georgia Tech did in the first half is what they haven't been able to do this year. They had a halftime lead against Duke, and they scored on the kickoff return in the second half. But they weren't able to come up with any more big plays for the rest of the game. Another interesting thing is Virginia, you know, doesn't fumble the ball very often. Going into the Wake Forest game, only one fumble up to that point, and they lost that one in a critical situation. Well, they had some fumbles last week that seemed to get them in a bad state of mind, and it's kind of funny about fumbles, as you know from your pro career. Sometimes when you get started on something like that, it can really go downhill on you. That's right. If you're not thinking about it, it doesn't happen, but when you start concentrating on hanging on to the football, and boom, out it comes. Well, we'll be back for the second half kickoff right after this message. Alone. Georgia Tech's research contracts total over $80 million. 11,000 of the brightest students anywhere have found their way to Tech. More National Merit Scholars per capita than at any state university in the nation. The path to Georgia Tech is well-traveled. 5'7 freshman for Columbus. If Collier was eligible to be in the NCAA stats for kickoff returns, he would lead the nation. But he needs three returns to be included in the stats, having, having enough returns. His coach says he knows no fear. Let's see what happens here. It's going to come down to Wise instead. 14 at the 10-yard line, out to the 22-yard line. Goes number 14, Daryl Wise. Down he goes. It'll be Georgia Tech ball. Number 49, Kevin Edwards with the tackle. Yellow Jackets first down 10 from their 21-yard line, leading 14 to nothing. As we said at halftime, the second half has been a problem for Georgia Tech. Just a lack of depth and injuries and the inability to make the big plays in the second half hurt them. First down 10, Tech from the 22-yard line. Wisenhunt moving from the left to the right. He's the tight end, number nine. Newberry to throw on first down. It is complete to number one, Daryl Norton, number eight, Daly, covering short of a first down by about a yard and a half. 
This is something, again, that you will not see often from Georgia Tech. But Dewberry has been effective tonight. He's been on target, throws it low into the outside, a safe place to place the ball. Norton makes a catch. It'll be second down, and let's call it one for Georgia Tech. Just outside their 30-yard line. They lead 14 to nothing, opening moment of the second half. Handoff goes to the fullback, number 28, Keith Glanton. That was 20. Robert Levette, who's playing hurt tonight, injured. Levette does not have a lot of yards so far. Six carries, only five yards for Tech's leading rusher. He's playing with a sore ankle and knee. There are the stats from the first half of play. The passing yardage is probably the most interesting stat at this point. Schutz has had a good year throwing the football. And Dewberry, not known for his passing, has been effective tonight. It is a Tech first down. They're spotting it at the 32-yard line. The nose of the ball just on the other side of the 32, as you see on the good, tight, close-up camera shot. First down, 10 Tech from the 32. Opening moment, second quarter. In the backfield, 28 Glanton, number 20 Robert Levette. Tech has split two receivers off the bottom of the screen to the right side. Here's Levette, tries to get some blocks, got a couple. Levette out of bounds at the 37, tackled by number 30, Charles McDaniel. Georgia Tech is trying to run away from Lester Lyles as often as possible. Lyles is to the wide side of the field in this particular play. McDaniel hustles over and puts the hat on Levette. First contact, five yards downfield. Second down, five. Yellow Jackets from the 37-yard line of Georgia Tech. They lead 14-0. That's 83, Stanfill in motion. And off to the fullback, it is Ronnie Cohn, tackled by 41, David Bond of Virginia. Third and five in their own territory. Let's see if Tech runs a draw here or elects to put the football in the air. Noisy crowd at Grant Field, not a large crowd, but an active one tonight as their Yellow Jackets are leading 14 to nothing. Wizen Hunt moves from left to right to tight end. the option. It's kept by Dewberry as he turns it upfield. He can't get but a couple of yards out to the 40, tackled by 96 Wiley. Interesting formation. Both wide receivers to one side. Wisenhut to the same side. He's not an eligible receiver. They have him there for blocking. Dewberry decides to keep the ball. Nice play by the Cavaliers on defense. Ron Rice into punt. This will be his fifth punt of the night. Averaging 35.3 per punt. That's a lot less than his average. Long count here. Low snap. Rice gets away a beauty. It's number eight, Ray Daly, catching it at the 20-yard line. Ray Daly with a fair catch. And there the Cavaliers will take over. Trailing by a score of 14 to nothing. We're in the third quarter. Cavaliers need to see if they can untrack their offense. It begins with our LSU Tulane telecast from the Superdome in New Orleans at 8.05 Eastern Time. A great upset last year with Tulane over LSU equally matched this year. Then on Friday, November 25th, the Hawks go to Boston's Garden for a game with the Celtics. Then Saturday, November 26th at Rupp Arena, Louisville and Kentucky basketball. That's at 8 Eastern Time. And Sunday night, the 27th, NCAA Division I-AA first round playoff coverage. What a Thanksgiving weekend on the Superstation. First down 10, Virginia from their own 20. Shoots only 3 out of 12 for 42 yards passing. Going to see if he can add to the total. It's complete to 22, Nick Merrick. Merrick out to the 50-yard line. 30-yard pass completion. Harrison covering. 3 out of 12 is a very important stat here. And most of the three com the three completions, I think, were all screens, Bob. This is really the first throw downfield that he's completed. Merrick makes a catch in the seam. It is first down 10. Cavaliers from the 50. That's Howard Petty, the freshman tailback with a good speed, turns the corner, gets the first down, and then is knocked out of bounds on the far sideline. 
They're going to say he got out of bounds before he got the first down at the 42-yard line. He was chased out of bounds by 52 Horton. As you can see in the statistics, they've been averaging five yards per rush. They've got a balanced offense. You see the end of this run here by Howard Petty. Second down, two. Petty again. Down he goes after he gets the first down by about half a yard. 56 Ivory Lee with the tackle. We have learned that number nine, Georgia Tech's fine tight end Ken Wisenhut, who was playing with a broken bone in his hand, is out of the game with a sore knee now. They are checking on him on the sideline. We'll have a further report. He's up and walking around. He may return to action. First down, 10. Cavaliers from the 40 of Tech. And a good game there by 29, Steve Morse. He gets close to the first down, down to the 30. He's going to be short by half a yard. Big gain on first down. Morris countersteps, Carricker and Brookshire lead it up through the hole, cleaning Yellow Jackets out of the way. Wizard Hunt on the sideline. The guy's a remarkable athlete. We'll talk about him in a minute. Second down one, Virginia from the 31 of Tech. Tech leading 14-0. Shoots. As a man, it's complete at the 13-yard line to number 21, Billy Smith. First down, Cavaliers. Rutland covering number 16. An 18-yard pass completion. He was forced out of bounds by... This is when Shoots is at his best. Seven-step drop in the pocket, sets up. Smith breaks it off, and the ball is delivered on time. First down, 10 Cavaliers. They're at the 13 of Tech. Shoots. As the man, it's complete at the five-yard line. Number 22, Nick Merrick, the flanker with the reception. That time, Kobe Lance covering for Tech. It's Merrick's second catch on Lance inside the 20-yard line. We mentioned earlier he's got a tremendous size advantage down here. If they throw it, you may look for him just to loft it up in the corner. Second down, two from the six-yard line of Tech. The handoff to 28, Derek Jenkins, touchdown Cavaliers. Bob, almost identical to the first drive that we saw of Virginia's. The big difference, obviously, is this time they put it into the end zone. Point after attempt by Kenny Stadlin is good. Stadlin has now broken the Virginia record for most points kicking in a season. The old record, 56. He now has 57. Back in a moment. contest and compiled a record of 18 wins, 22 losses in one tie. Two schools appeared in bowl games last year, North Carolina in the Sun Bowl and Maryland in the first Aloha Bowl. The preceding message provided by the Atlantic Coast Conference. Virginia about to kick off. Their kicker is number five, Kenny Stadlin. is 37 yards per kick return. Down hard at the 14-yard line goes Corey Collier. That'll lessen his kick return average a little bit. Great coverage by the Cavaliers. It'll be Georgia Tech ball leading now 14-7. Stewart Mines 89 with the tackle. There seemed to be some confusion, Bob, as to whether he was going to come out with it or not. Darrell Wise was back there with him. Almost signal for him to stay in. First down, 10 Tech from the 14-yard line. Leading now, 14-7, 10-25 to go third quarter. Newberry a lot of time. Incomplete intended for Daryl Norton trying to come back and get it. Howard Lewis covering 25 for Virginia. Daryl Norton looked like Fred Bolitnikoff on this play. Dewberry is waiting. Norton breaks back to the outside. 
and then starts heading back down the sideline. He's there, but his concentration is broken at the last minute, doesn't hang on. Second down, 10, Georgia Tech. Line of scrimmage, 14-yard line for Grant Field in Atlanta, 10-18 to go third quarter. Newberry, Collier, and Cohn in the backfield. And off to the fullback, that's Cohn. Gets out real close to the first down, number 26, Lester Lyles with the tackle. They're going to spot it short of the first down. John Thomas playing right tackle, gets a nice block, springs Cone. This guy's impressive, isn't he, Bob? Good runner, Ronnie Cone, playing with that sore hamstring, a senior from Statesboro. Third down, short yardage, call it one for Tech. Corey Collier gets the first down, out to the 25-yard line, gets it by just inches, but it's enough to count. 93 Swan with a tackle for the Cavaliers. If you're coming up to hit that young man, you better keep your head up because this guy gets some elevation. Watch him step over a tackler here. Maintains his balance, finally knocked off his feet, but he's got the first down. Number 25, Corey Collier, 5'7", 185 pounds, playing with a sore shoulder tonight. He played with it last week, though, and had 86 yards. Measurement on the field. As you can see by the length of the ball and slightly more. Jim Knight, the referee. We understand that Daryl Wise, the Georgia Tech flanker, number 14, has a bruised shoulder, is out of the game, but we're expecting him to return. Tom Stanfield playing in his place right now for Tech, number 83. First and 10, Collier. Got out of bounds at the 25-yard line, gain of about five around the right side. Some of the folks from the Metro Atlanta Cable Associations are here, cable operators who have been very consistent in their support of WTBS and especially TBS Sports. We're happy they're with us at Grant Field tonight here in Atlanta. Number nine, Wisenhut, back in for Tech on second and five from the 30. And off to Cole. First down. That cutback can be such an effective play when you've got guys like Waters and John Thomas up front, Derek Wynn back to the weak side. The linebacker on the, away from the play has to be very patient in his pursuit. If he overruns it, he opens up a big hole to the wide side of the field. First down, 10 Tech from the 36-yard line. Wise is back in for Tech now. There he is in motion, number 14. Hand off to the tailback, Collier. Collier, tough yardage to the 39-yard line. We have learned that Bart Barenholt, number 27 for Virginia, is out of the game, will not return. Their free safety, he has a twisted knee. If anybody understands line play, it's Bill Curry. He's gone against some of the best that have ever played the game of football in Green Bay and Baltimore. Got these guys well-trained. Second down, seven from the 39-yard line. Tech on a drive now, leading 14-7, 8.26 to go, third quarter. <laughs> 28 is Glatton, and he struggles out to the 40-yard line. Gain of only a yard on that right side screen. Tackle by 66, John Muntz, a sophomore from Everton, Pennsylvania. Munson's has played himself a good game. Moved from inside linebacker to outside because of injuries, and it's, it's a difficult thing for a college young man to change situations, learn a new position in a short amount of time. He's done well. Now third down, seven from the 40 for Georgia Tech. Conversion situation, they are three out of six so far tonight. Newberry has a man. It is complete for the first down to the 45-yard line of Virginia. Number 89 is Richard Salem, the senior from Altamont Springs, Florida. Ray Daly, number eight, covering for Virginia. They like to throw it wide to the split receiver. You see the tight end, Wisenhut, moving across the field in the shorter area, and that opens it up for Salem downfield. 
Newberry, 11 out of 13 for 162 yards and one TD. What a night for the sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia. Pitch to Corey Collier. Breaks one tackle, but not the second. A gain of two to the left side. Collier hold down by 96, Mark Wiley. Quite a collision at the point of attack. They're lining up in an unbalanced line here, and they're bringing a split receiver back in motion. And he's cracking back on the strong safety who's trying to get up field support, and he's preventing him from supporting on the play. It'll be second down, eight tech from the 43-yard line of the Cavaliers. Tech 14, Virginia 7. DCC action from Atlanta. LaVette in, now a tailback. Grant the fullback for Tech. Stan Phil in motion. Fakes to LeVette, throws over the middle, Wisenhunt incomplete at the 40. Number nine, Wisenhunt, who has that broken hand and then earlier had a bruised knee, is back in, but couldn't hold on. Looks like, look like Munts gave him a shot. See the weak side inside linebacker blitzing, oh, and Munts pops him as he's stretched out. That kid's a guttier player. There you see Wayne shoot struggling tonight, 6 out of 15, but John Dewberry, a transfer from the University of Georgia, having himself a night in the air, third and eight from the 43. Dewberry's going to go upstairs again. Can't find anybody. Short of the first down by about a yard, Dewberry was tripped up at the 36-yard line by Charles McDaniel, number 30. Bill Curry just ran down to the... 39-yard line to take a look and see how far he had to go. Dewberry's got the quick feet. Doesn't have a real strong arm, but he can avoid the rush in fine fashion. Scoots his way upfield. Just has his feet knocked out from under him. Tech now with double tight ends. Nine, Wisenhunt, and 80, Wilkins. They're going to go for it. Fourth down and one at the 36 of the Cavaliers. first down he was hit by Charles McDaniel it'll all depend where they decide to spot the ball you can hear the coaches from Virginia yelling motion they felt like the fullback Blanton was in motion on that particular play but it looked like he'd gotten started down he's been gone for a second it's not illegal procedure Number 20 is Robert LeVette, who's still down. Remember, LeVette came into this game with a sore ankle and knee, did not play last week against Duke. Also, the backup tailback, Corey Collier, the freshman, is out of the game right now with a twisted ankle. They're expecting that he may be able to return. The injury bug continues at Georgia Tech. Le LeVette has been a great back for Georgia Tech. He'd be a great back for anyone scored more points last year than any returning junior, rushed for more yards. Just an excellent player and fine competitor. 6-0-3 remaining third quarter of play. Tech leads 14-7. Defeated Tech here, but this year been doing very well in the ACC. Two and two so far. Georgia Tech has one win in the ACC. Tech defeated NC State. Tech got the first down, but lost their tailback, LeVette. Looked like his right leg was sore. We'll get an update on his injury when we return. First and 10 from the 35. Wise in motion. Dewberry. Got a man down there. It's Wise. Incomplete. Good recovery by number eight, Ray Daly. Now there's a penalty marker in the end zone. It's going to be pass interference against Virginia. As you said, Bob, Wise was behind the secondary. Sometimes what happens in a situation like that is a defensive back as he tries to catch up to the receiver, fails to get his head around and look for the football. It looked like Lester Lyles had face masked. Defense in the end zone. First and goal on the one. 
Daly makes a nice play on the ball, as you can see, but Lyle does not get his head around. They call pass interference on Lester Lyle. A 34-yard penalty takes it to the one. First down goal, Tech. Tech leading by a score of 14-7, 5.55 to go, third quarter. A keeper by Dewberry. The officials say he did not get in. The third quarter has not been a good quarter for Georgia Tech this year. They've only scored one touchdown, and it came on a kickoff return. This will be the first score from scrimmage in the third quarter all year for Tech. Nose of the ball resting on the goal line. Excellent defensive play by the Cavaliers. Handoff to the fullback. Number 26, Cone. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Ronnie Cone with his third TD of the year. I heard Bill Curry ask him at practice yesterday if he felt like he was ready, and his response was, I'm not going to miss an opportunity like this. Ron Rice, point after good. Tech 21, Virginia 7. Five minutes, 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Ronnie Cohn scored the touchdown, the senior from Statesboro. Rice for the kickoff. Pittman is not going to run it out. He'll down it in the end zone for a Virginia touchback, and Virginia brings it out to the 20-yard line. Tech consumed five minutes, 15 seconds on the scoring drive of 86 yards in 14 plays. A comment on that piece Greg Saker did at halftime, and I don't think anybody can understand how hard it is to do play-by-play -play on a Thursday and then turn around and do it again on a Saturday. All the information that you have to digest to all the people, and you're doing it on the spot. The guy that's doing the replay always gets to look at the numbers and who did it, and I just think you do a super job. Thank you, Tim. First down 10 from the 20 in motion, number 22, Nick Merrick. Pitch back to Barry Word, the tailback number four, out to the 28-yard line and down, tackled by Dante Jones, number five for Georgia Tech. We're going to be in for an exciting half of football. Both these teams have been moving the ball well now, and it's going to be a lot of offense here in the second half. Let's go now! Second down, short yardage. It'll be second down two, Cavaliers from the 28. Speaking of preparation, we always have to thank the great crew and our spotter, Kim Anderson, statistics for David Carroll. Impossible without them. Play fake, shoots. Going long, a man's beat him. It's Billy Smith. He's got it down to the 22-yard line. Billy Smith was tackled by Anthony Harrison. A 50-yard completion. And the Cavaliers come storming back. One thing that worried Bill Curry, you've got two freshmen playing. Those two Georgia Tech players on the left side of your screen there are both freshmen. And as they get tired, they lose their concentration a little bit. Smith just ran right by them. First down, 10 Cavaliers at the 21 of Tech. Tech leading 21 to 7, 420 to go, third quarter. Barry Word, the tailback. Running room, close to a first down. He goes down at about the 12 and a half yard line. 52, Rob Horton with a tackle on sophomore Barry Word. He is the third of three brothers to play at the University of Virginia. This guy can really truck. They've got some great running backs at Virginia. I think they wish a few of them were defensive backs. Second down in less than a yard from the 12 of Tech. Word again. Finds the seam. Touchdown, Barry Word, University of Virginia. Narrows the gap to 21 to 13. You see a great block on this play by... Derek Jenkins, the fullback. It looks like he took Westbrook out on that play. And we're cutting back upfield against the grain. 
Teams usually reflect the character of their coaches, and George Welsh is a fighter. Point after by Kenny Stadlin is good. And now 21 to 14 is the score with three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Looks like we got an old-fashioned ACC matchup here in Atlanta, Georgia. Just excellent blocking. Georgia Tech trying to pursue, but you see those linemen throwing. Ted Roof hits the ground, and Word cuts it back against the grain. Harrison misses, and Georgia Tech needs to do a better job of tackling on plays like that, simply. Barry Word playing with cracked ribs. His first game back was last week after being out with injuries for a while. High hurdler when he was in high school. Just a sophomore. He's big at 6'2", 215, and is one of the fastest two or three players on this Virginia team. Just a reminder that we'll be selecting a most valuable player from each team tonight. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to each school. We're going to see if Georgia Tech can keep their offense going. They seem to have found it's the second half offense. Showing a little bit of courage here and fight. See if they can keep putting points on the board. Drives Sammy Lilly deep into the end zone, number 37 for Georgia Tech. He doesn't bring it out. Look at that scoring drive, a minute 35 for Virginia. Interestingly, Tim, the other Virginia scoring drive was only a minute and 58, whereas Tech is taking a little bit longer on the clock to get their drives in. I think it's good for Tech's defense that they are taking a little bit more time. One of the problems has been that Tech's defense, as good as it might be, spends too much time on the field. They just get worn down. It'll be first down 10 Tech from their own 20 yard line. Collier is back in after twisting his ankle. Pass intended for number one Daryl Norton out at the 31 yard line. It goes incomplete. So Robert Levette twisted his ankle and is going to be out for the rest of the game as you look at the scoring by quarter for this, these teams coming up here in the, uh, as you can see, leading up to this game is how I should say that. Levette is out for the game. Collier is in but has a sore ankle for Tech's tailback position. That third quarter there, seven of those points were scored tonight. It was 10 before. Second down, 10 Tech from their own 20-yard line. 3.35 to go, quarter number three. Darrell Wise in motion. Hand off to the fullback. Big opening. Keith Glatton goes out to the 31-yard line. Georgia Tech first down. Cone and Glatton have alternated at fullback tonight, and both have done a good job for Tech. Both offensive lines playing exceptional football. And here you're seeing the Georgia Tech... Offensive lineman Waters, Pano, Gwynn, Thomas doing a fine job. Glanton on the night with 43 yards, and the other fullback, Cone, has 41 yards. Fullback position productive for Georgia Tech, and they're going to it again. Out to the 36-yard line goes Glanton, tackled by 98, Ron Mattis. Nothing fancy here. Motion causes it causes a change in the defense. Waters buries Bond and opens up that hole that Glanton moves through. Second down five, Georgia Tech leading 21-14. Virginia came right back and answered Tech's touchdown drive very quickly. With a tailback, Collier with a sore ankle, but you can never tell it by looking at him. Oh my, what great speed. Corey Collier to the 36-yard line, chased out of bounds by Rob Sweeney. What feet this guy has. He hits the hole with tremendous acceleration. Watch him move through there. That was Gwynn, walls off his man. He breaks a tackle by McDanielson. He's up and running. Daryl Norton doing a nice job trying to occupy a defender down there, Howard Lewis, and finally his momentum carries him out of bounds. Corey Collier, he had an excellent game last week against Duke. Having a better game tonight. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Dewberry finds Wisenhunt incomplete at the 27-yard line. No question about it. The broken right hand of Wisenhunt, when you saw him in your picture a moment ago, you could see the rubber cast on his right hand causing problems. Well, the cast is going to affect your ability to catch the ball, but that young man used to be a quarterback. 
And the first game he played as a quarterback was against Notre Dame uh, three years ago, and Georgia Tech tied them 3-3. Three three. First snap he took was on his own three-yard line. He's a pressure player. Ken Wisenhut. Great student also. A student, I understand. Second down, 10. Georgia Tech from the 35-yard line in Virginia. That is Cleve Pounds. The third tailback we've seen in tonight. Pounds a sophomore from Douglasville, Georgia. Tackled by Rob Sweeney. Got an isolation here on Ken Wisenhut blocking. Blocking there on Mark Wiley. That's Gwynn pulling and hitting Mattis as they pour up through the hole. Speaking of Wisenhunt, he's a straight-A student, Craig Sager of CNN, who also does, of course, our college reporting for our TBS games, has a feature on academic athletes next Thursday night. Wisenhunt featured. There's Dewberry on the keeper. Got only a couple of yards short of the first down. It was a conversion situation. Tech does not convert 96 Wiley with the tackle. The last time in this situation, they went for it. The field goal kicker is... Coming onto the field, going off the field. <laughs> Looks like they're going to kick a field goal here, Bob. Newberry ran into one of the officials down there, causing some chuckles from the crowd here. And Ron Rice is in. It is going to be a 46-yard field goal attempt. Rice missed a 50-yard attempt earlier tonight. For the game, 7 out of 12 in field goal kicking. He's within one of tying the Georgia... 28 career field goals. This one could tie. does. 46-yard field goal for the senior from Lithonia, Georgia, Ron Rice. Not exactly an end-over-end -end thing of beauty, but the only thing that counts, does it go between the uprights? And there's three points for Georgia Tech. Ron Rice missed his first three of the year, but since then has been kicking very well. He's also the punter for this football team and a valuable special teams player. And now Tech takes a 24-14 lead. The three points could prove to be big. 51 seconds to go, third quarter. Now let's listen to the voice of Georgia Tech football on the radio network, Al Seraldo, and the way he described the field goal. Cut. Kicked by Ron Rice. It is high enough. It is. Good. 46-yard field goal by Ron Wright. It's time to Johnny Smith's record. Career record of 28 field goals. Georgia Tech 24. And Virginia 14 is what Al Seraldo was about to say. The 30th season, Seraldo has been broadcasting Georgia Tech football. From back in the days of Bobby Don. Ron Rice with a kickoff. It is going to come down to Malcolm Pittman at the three. Pittman, an outstanding kickoff returner, gets it out to the 26-yard line. The junior from Baltimore, Maryland. Came into this game fourth in the nation in kickoff returns. Tackle made by Marvin Carolina for Georgia Tech. You mentioned Bobby Dodd. The, the foyer of that plaza that Georgia Tech has is really impressive. From 1904 to 1966, Georgia Tech has only had three coaches. I said that Pittman was fourth, but as you saw in our graphics, he is fifth in the nation in kickoff returns. We'll probably drop a little tonight after the performance so far, unless he gets a big one. On the first down and 10, Cavaliers get the ball to the 30. Number 29, Steve Morse carrying, tackled by Jack Westbrook, Tech strong safety. Tradition is certainly an important part of college football, and they've had a rich one here at Georgia Tech. John Heisman. How'd you like to play for him? I'm almost old enough to play for him. <laughs> The man after whom the Heisman Trophy is named. A lot of folks around the country don't know that he was one of the early coaches in college football. There's 29 Morse again on the second down, six. Morse gets out across the 30 to the 32-yard line, gain of one or two on the play, no more. And Ted Roof, number 93 for Tech with a tackle. Time running out in the third quarter. The clock ticks down to zero, and it's Georgia Tech 24, Virginia 14. 15 minutes of ACC college football remaining here in prime time on the Superstation. We'll be right back. USA 1 is taking charge. 
by Coors Light, so turn it loose tonight. See a shot of the crowd at Grant Field, a lot of those folks from Turner Broadcasting System, employees, of course, TBS headquarters in Atlanta, located very near Georgia Tech, and a lot of the employees from TBS, both the Superstation, CNN, and CNN Headline News are all here watching the game tonight. Third down four, Cavaliers from the 32-yard line. They're only two out of seven on conversion shoots. Converts this one to Billy Smith, number 21, the split end. And Smith gets just enough for the first down, out to the 37, tackled by 93, Roof of Tech. He had to load that in a hurry. Smith is coming across as the linebackers drop. He's coming across underneath. He hits right in between them. And he takes a real shot in the small of his back. It's painful to be a receiver sometimes. 14-42 to go in the game. Tech 24, Virginia 14. Cavaliers ball. On the first down, shoots, almost trips over his own man. Under pressure. Down he goes at the 28. First man back there was the freshman nose guard, Ivory Lee. His fifth tackle of the night. And just moments ago, I saw Rob Horton and Ted Roof, the linebackers, shaking Lee by the shoulder as if to fire him up. He, he steps on Steve Morris there, breaks his concentration a little bit. It's a screen pass to the halfback. But Tech was in a man-to-man -man defense, didn't have any room to stick it in there. Ivory Lee getting to the quarterback. Second down, 19, Virginia, from their own 29. Shoots, hands off to Petty with a good speed. Petty to the 40-yard line. He's still about seven or eight yards short of the first down, but he got back a lot of the second down and 19, bringing up third down and about eight now. Both the Virginia fullbacks are doing an excellent job of blocking, Bob. That time, Steve Morris picked off the support man and opened up a hole for Petty back to the inside. Petty, 72 yards on the night. He had 182 yards versus Wake Forest. This man can really gallop. Five defensive backs protect third down eight. Virginia from the Cavalier 40. Petty in motion. Complete. Nick Merrick, 22, was really leveled by 37. Sammy Lilly, the fifth nickel back for Georgia Tech. Here's a look at five secondary people for Georgia Tech. Five, three of those five are freshmen. You see Sammy Lilly. Ugh. When you leave the ground as a receiver, you have to be ready to accept the blow. the punt fair catch at the 25 yard line by Westbrook and it'll be Georgia Tech ball there after they stop the Virginia Cavaliers a 34 yard punt by Walker and we'll be back in a moment with 1302 to go in the ball game Georgia Tech 24 Virginia Grant Field in Atlanta Georgia and it is Georgia Tech ball first and 10 at the Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket 26 yard line Tech quarterback Dewberry, 11 out of 16 for 162 yards and one TD tonight. Hands off to his fullback. Number 26 is Ronnie Cohn. Cohn to the 28-yard line. Down he goes. McDaniel and Lewis combining on the tackle for the Cavaliers. The last possession by Virginia was the first time the team had possession of the ball in the second half and didn't score. Second down eight, Georgia Tech from the 28-yard line of Tech. Number 80, the tight end moving is Gary Wilkins. He lines up now on the right side. Newberry to throw on second down. As his man, it is incomplete. He was driven out of bounds. Richard Salem, Ray Daly making the play. The rule on that is that if the receiver is in the air and driven out of bounds by the would-be tackler and comes down out of bounds, then it is an incomplete pass. It's remarkable how good a job these referees do on the spot. Let's see what happens here and see if we can catch it in the replay. Oh. That was a close one. He would have been hard-pressed to come down and bounds, don't you think? 12-24 to go in the game. Third down eight, Georgia Tech on a conversion situation. Tech is completing 50% of their third down conversions into first downs. An important one here. They want to hold on to that 24-14 lead. Handed off to Collier, their tailback. He gets only a yard or two to the 30. Tech's going to have to give up the ball and bring in Ron Rice to punt. And the Cavaliers, trailing by 10, are going to have another opportunity to get back on the board. 
Good job by the Virginia defense. I'm sure George Welsh was happy to see that. The Curry electing not to take any chances deep in his own territory, throw the ball on third and long, just run the draw, hopefully get it on the ground, but it didn't work. Ron Rice into punt. This will be his sixth punt of the night, averaging 36.4 yards per punt. Gets away a good one. Number eight is Daly. Fair catches it at his own 25-yard line. So not a bad job by Ron Rice. Virginia comes out after the 45-yard punt by number seven, Ron Rice for Georgia Tech. Back in a moment, Tech leading 24-14. The sun brings out all... Your coach looks on. His team trailing 24 to 14. They have the ball first and 10 at their own 26. Slot left formation. Shoots. Throwing under pressure. He was looking for either 22 Merrick or 21 Billy Smith. Westbrook was out there. The ball went right between the both of them about the 50-yard line. He takes a shot here after he lets go of the football, but... It's a little delayed boot. Doesn't really have time to set up, and as he releases it, that's life in the world of a quarterback occasionally. After the ball's in the air, you take heavy shots sometimes. Second down, 10, Virginia, from their own 26. In motion, 87, Billy Griggs, the tight end. Pitch to the tailback. It's Howard Petty. Avoids one tackler. Oh, what a hit. Driven out of bounds on the far side. Anderson and Toby Lance combining on the tackle for Georgia Tech, but Petty gets substantial yardage. Malone drives Petty deep upfield. You'll see number 95 spinning off the block, but here comes Toby Lance. Pow! Nice tackle. It'll be third down for Cavaliers from their own 32-yard 32, uh, 32 line. Tech with five defensive backs in right now. Virginia only three out of eight on third down conversions. Here's the pitch to 29, Morse. Morse gets the first down on the left side. Marvin Carolina, strong safety for Tech, making the stop. As a defensive coordinator, you're always playing poker with the offense. This time, Rick Lance, a defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, decided to blitz. Virginia tossed the ball to Morse, got the first down. 11-10 remaining in the football game. Tech with a 10-point, 24-14 lead. First down, 10 Cavaliers. Shoots to throw on first down. Incomplete, he short hopped it out here to the 48-yard line, intended for Nick Merrick. The flanker, the split end, Billy Smith was also out in the area. The pass just didn't get there. A little bit throw to the, short throw to the wide side of the field. Lance backpedaling. Sees the ball in the air, starts to drive, ball thrown low. Jack Westbrook coming to help. Second down, 10 Cavaliers. There is Wayne Schutz having a tough night, 8 out of 20 for 154 yards. Going to throw the 21st time, all kinds of protection. When he gets that, he completes the pass out to the 48-yard line. It's number 22, Nick Merrick, the flanker, who's a big one, 6'5", getting up with a reception. Wayne is looking to go over the top to Billy Smith, drawing down the middle of the field. But Anthony Harrison, the freshman, is in great position. He's not there. And this is what Schutz has done better this year. He's come off his primary receiver if he's covered and got it to that secondary guy. This time it's Merrick. First down, 10 Cavaliers right from the middle of the football field. There's Merrick, long, tall drink of water that he is. A fake reverse. Petty kept the ball and got about seven yards on the left side. Tackled by Jack Westbrook, the veteran, strong safety. Didn't get out of position on the fake and stayed there to make the stop. Sometimes this can affect the pursuit of the defense. Or they might just be looking to set up a play later on. Second down four. Cavaliers trying to keep their drive alive. 9.58 to go in the game. Tech leads 24-14. Shoots. Going for everything. Looking for 22. Merrick. Incomplete. Penalty marker at the four. Toby Lance was all over Merrick. And there's a yellow flag on the field. Oh, Toby. 
Murphy. It's a lonely place to be. Merrick had him beat. Lance face mask him. It's the same thing that Lester Lyles had done in an earlier play. You have to fight to get your head around. He was in good position, and he caught Merrick. The ball was a little bit underthrown, but didn't quite get his head around. They spotted at the five-yard line. A gain of 39 yards for Virginia on the penalty. First down goal, Cavaliers. Slot left formation. 24-14 Tech leading, but Virginia threatening. Hand off to the fullback. He's hit instantly. That's 28. Derek Jenkins did drive to the four, maybe just inside. Ivory Lee. 56 with a tackle for Georgia Tech. I think they're going to be happy with the performance of Ivory Lee. Bobby's covered a lot of ground, made several plays. A freshman from Statesboro, Georgia, who had a big job on his hand after Tech lost two nose guards, Donnie Chisholm and Dave Passarella, had to come in and fill in, and fill in he is done. It is now Cavalier ball. Second down goal from the three. Double tight ends. Virginia. The sweep down here, Lyman pulling out in front, Westbrook turning the play in. If you're going to tackle this guy, you better hold on. Roof comes over, tries to bring him down, but he fights his way through. Looks like Randy Brookshire is down on the ground there. We'll give you more information about his injury when we come back after this message. Virginia leaving the field there was some fisticuffs down there after the point after here's the replay just watch this I'm not sure what happened here obviously there's some swinging going on and somebody's got a hold of his face mask that's Olderman right there he's an Atlanta boy trying to get on his feet Jim Knight, the official, came over to the sideline. He's explaining to Coach Curry, now running to the far sideline, as you watch the action down there, to explain to George Welsh exactly what the penalties will be. They are penalizing Virginia, apparently. Olderman's a little bit upset there, huh, Bob? It looked like he had the right to be upset. <laughs> he was getting the worst of that for quite a while. I believe it's going to be offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties will be the call on the play, and they'll kick off from the 40-yard line. And the real business of the game is, with 9.04 remaining, it is Georgia Tech 24, Virginia 21, and we've got ourselves a very close ball game. Big offense by both teams. Both defenses have not been as effective as they'd like to be stopping the run. And for Georgia Tech, it's opened up the pass, and it's starting to open up the pass for Virginia. Stadlin kicking off. Coming down to Collier in the end zone. He's going to run it out. Collier out to the 29-yard line. What blazing acceleration. It's Rob Sweeney with the tackle. And Collier gets a good 29-yard return, and there's Olderman sitting on the sideline now. Olderman, the right guard for Virginia. From what we saw in the replay, he was justifiably upset. Tech ball, first down 10 from their own 30-yard line, just inside the 30. 8.58 to go in the game. Georgia Tech 24, Virginia 21. Dewberry. Well set up screen to Collier. Collier to the 41 and a first down for Georgia Tech. 93 Swan with the tackle for the Cavaliers. And Dewberry having himself a heck of a night. 12 out of 18 now. I think he's surprising a lot of people here. I know he's probably surprising the defensive coordinator for Virginia. They felt if they could force them to pass, they'd be in good shape. Here you see Collier legging it down the field with that screen pass. 
yards in the ball game for Georgia Tech, number 32, and Ronnie Cohn is the fullback. Wise 14 in motion on a first down 10. That's Cohn. It's not Cohn. Correction, it's Keith Blanton who had come into the ball game in place of Ronnie Cohn with a great run. Blanton earlier had a 61-yard touchdown reception to the 29-yard line of Virginia. Another big play for the Georgia Tech offense. You see the safety blitzing up the cornerback, really daily blitzing up in there. And once he's able to break that tackle, when you break a tackle on a blitz, the pursuit is gone and he takes it upfield. Big play for the Yellow Jackets. There is Keith Glanton. He had that 61-yard touchdown reception. And he's got 86 yards rushing. Now Cleve Pounds runs it inside the 25, down to the 22, tackled by Edgar Davis. I'm sure Bill Curry is excited, excited about seeing this offense here late in the game. They've had a problem late in the fourth quarter, but they're certainly not having a problem tonight. Second down for Tech at the 23-yard line of Virginia. Georgia Tech leading 24-21, 7.56 to go in this football game. Pitch back to the tailback. That's Corey Collier. Out of bounds he goes at the 23-yard line. Run out by Rob Sweeney, number two, the free safety for Virginia. Sweeney filling in for Farenhold comes underneath the block. The support man makes the hit. Bill Curry there talking to Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, getting ready for Virginia's next possession. It will now be third down and three, Georgia Tech at the 22 of Virginia. Risen Hunt in motion. And off to the tailback, Collier. Nice cut. Collier, touchdown, Georgia Tech. run by Collier. They're excited to have this man around. Once again, Virginia blitzing. Nice blocks at the point of attack. Lyles coming over. Cuts back, takes it into the end zone. He's going to be a good player here for a lot of years, Bob. Ron Rice for the point after. End zone view. And you can see that the PAT is good. 7.44 remaining in this football game. Georgia Tech leading Virginia by 10 again. 31-21. to 21. And now... Corey Collier has 116 yards on 16 carries. We'll be back in a moment to Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia. ACC football with the Yellow Jackets and the Cavaliers. Here's Al Seraldo, the voice of Georgia Tech football, describing the touchdown. In motion is Wizenhunt. Hand off to Corey Collier at the 20, 15. Collier at the 10. Collier at the 5. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Boy, Collier at There's the sound of Yellow Jacket football for 30 years. Al Seraldo has been describing the action. We got to listen to the voice of the balls, University of Tennessee's John Ward, when we did the LSU-Tennessee game, and we like to think it adds some to the flavor and color of college football. The kickoff in and out of the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Cavaliers will bring it out to their own 20-yard line, trailing by 10, 31-21, with 7.44 remaining in this football game. I think it's always exciting to hear that, and I don't know if it's ever been done before. Do you know if it's being done before, Bob? Not to my knowledge. Mike Lardner, our producer, with the idea to help share some of the color that a lot of folks around the southeast, for instance, with Seraldo, 54 stations on the WGST. That's the flagship station network out of Atlanta and Georgia and in South Carolina. Listen to him for 30 years, and we do think it adds a lot to the flavor of college football. First down, 10 Cavaliers. Shoots. It's complete to 21, Billy Smith. And Smith spins his way to the 42-yard line. Rob Horton and Toby Lance combining on the tackle. And every time Tech scores, it seems to renew the vigor of Virginia. And back come the Cavaliers. Look at that fighting spirit. Georgia Tech rolling the zone towards Smith. They're jamming him as he leaves the line of scrimmage. 
but he works his way open anyway. Right his way upfield. Primary target. First down 10 Cavaliers from the 42-yard line of Virginia. In motion is Nick Merritt, number 22. And off to the tailback. That's Barry Word out to the 46-yard line. What a fine pair of tailbacks Virginia has in 11 Petty and 4 Barry Word. And Antonio Rice, their other player, is also good, and he's hurt. Number 20 for Georgia Tech is Robert Levette. You see the ankle packed in ice, his right ankle. He came into the game with a sore knee and ankle. He is out for the night. We wish him well with the injury. Second down six from the 46-yard line. Shoots. He's only 10 out of 22, completes this one to Word. Word, close to the first down, finally with second effort, I believe, gets it. Reginald Rutland, number 16, on the tackle for Tech. The Tech pack pass defense played that perfectly. They're dropping into their zones. It's a two-deep zone. The ball is thrown now in the flat. The idea is react, come up, and make the stop. Ted Roof can't grab, find the handle on Barry Ward, and he fights forward for the first down. To the 47 and a half of Georgia Tech. It's 31-21, Yellow Jackets. 6-28 remaining in this football game at Grant Field. Thursday night primetime action. ACC conference competition. Virginia has never defeated Tech since 1965 when the series began. On the first down, shoots under pressure. Throws the pass. It was intended over on the left side of Derek Jenkins, a fullback. It's incomplete at the 50. The was intended for number 28, Derek Jenkins. There's a player for Georgia Tech, excuse me, Tim, who was ejected after some of the fighting, Bobby Hodge. Number 79 for Virginia, Bob Olderman also ejected. That was a fight that happened after a point after when Virginia had scored on the second down. This is Derek Jenkins, about three or four yards to the 44-yard line. Ted Roof with the tackle. Georgia Tech has moved Toby Lance to weak safety, and they've got Sam Lilly playing the cornerback now and Reginald Rutland. They've got some speed on the corner. There's Mr. Alderman. He was on the receiving end of most of the action, it looked like to me. From the 44-yard line of Georgia Tech now, third down seven Cavaliers. Crucial third down conversion attempt. Virginia four out of ten on the night. American motion. Hand off to Petty. Needs a block. It's driven out of bounds. Short of the first down at the 41-yard line by 34 Toby Lance of Georgia Tech. It'll be fourth down. Let's see what Virginia decides to do with 5.29 to go in the game, and they trailing by 10. I think the go for it here, Bob. They haven't been able to stop Georgia Tech in the second half. Just a little counter here. Opposite guard pulling. Dante Jones doesn't make the tackle, but he drives him deep enough, forces him out of bounds. A little help from Toby Lance. There it is, fourth down four for Virginia. Pressure from Horton, number 52. He shot right up the middle and four shoots the throw early. What a great play by the Georgia Tech senior linebacker from Metter. We'll be back in a moment. 525 remains in the game and on downs, Tech will take over the ball, leading by 10. A goody call by Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech. Comes with the blitz. Shoots doesn't have time to really load and put it on the spot. First down 10, Georgia Tech from their own 42. Wise in motion. Georgia Tech leading 31-21. Hand off to Corey Collier. Nice moves. Out to the 47-yard line goes the freshman tailback. Playing with a slightly sore ankle he twisted earlier in this game. And 98 Mattis with the tackle for Virginia. I'd hate to try to tackle him when he's healthy. This young man not only has speed, but he has tremendous quickness. Look at that movement and body control. Second down five, Georgia Tech at the 47, trying to maintain ball control and trying to maintain their 10-point lead. Here comes Collier again. Bam, he goes down hard. Penalty marker down at the 49-yard line. Very few penalties tonight. Two well-coached football teams going after each other. Both offensive lines well-coached, doing an excellent job of blocking up front and giving some 
great running backs and space to show their stuff. We've seen some excellent running from both sides of the line of scrimmage. Virginia and from Georgia Tech tonight. Man in the white hat, James Knight, the referee of this game. Penalty against Georgia Tech. Marks it back to the 38-yard line, and he'll have an announcement for us. Holding, 10-yard foul, offense. Second down. And it's a, a becoming apparent that Georgia Tech's Bill Curry may be getting his second victory of the 1983 season. Tech came into the game 1-7. and seven. They lead now 31-21 with 4.30 to go in this game. Stanfield in motion. And off to the fullback. That is Keith Glanton, number 28. And Glanton gets a yard or so, not much more. 26 Lester Lyles with the tackle. Georgia Tech right now just thinking keep the ball on the ground, let the clock wind down. I'm sure they've had more offensive possession in the second half of this game than they've had all year in the second half. There's a great picture from our sideline camera. Of course, we pride ourselves on the great video coverage of the games. Primetime college football. Great video tonight from Jim Reeves, one of the outstanding technicians working for Turner Broadcasting, all of whom we're very proud. Here is Dewberry on the keeper. Penalty markers are down. Dewberry down at the 44-yard line. Gain of only a couple on the play. Clock down to 339 in the game. Edgar Davis, 99, with a tackle for the Cavaliers. One thing's for sure, those freshmen in the secondary maintain their concentration throughout the second Illegal half of this football. Hands, offense, decline, we're on four down. Stanfield comes back in motion and cracks in on the defensive end. Penalty decline, Ron Rice into punt. He'll take the snap inside his 30-yard line. Ray Daly, number eight, is back to take the Georgia Tech punt. Clock counting. They're going to let it count right down, probably. 25 seconds elapses, and they'll throw a penalty and penalize Tech five yards if they let it go. They didn't. Got it right at the snap of the clock. That's a rocket shot line drive. Daly inside his five. Great coverage by Tech. Daly is down at the nine-yard line with the tackle for Georgia Tech number 85. 95, Ralph Malone, check that. 50-yard punt. Must be a Virginia fan there, Bob. We'll be back in a moment. Personal computers have created a shocking new problem. Where do you... Evil player from Virginia, Howard Petty. 92 yards on the night, one touchdown. <laughs> down 10 Cavaliers from their nine-yard line. Here's Petty carrying now. Out to the 15, near the 15, and out of bounds on the far side. 22 Westbrook with a tackle. And the Tech most valuable player, John Dewberry. Excellent night for that youngster. He is only a sophomore. He's practicing there on the sideline a little bit. Threw the ball well, ran the option the few times they ran it effectively. Good game, John. Second down, six Virginia, trailing by 10. 2.59 to go in the game. Derek Jenkins with the carry. Short of the first down, Virginia's going to have to score in a hurry if they want to get back in the game, and yet they're running the ball. And it puzzles me a little bit. Maybe they feel like that's their best chance. They've got some great running backs. The offensive line has been doing a nice job, but they need to move it down the field, as you mentioned, Bob, in a hurry, and I'm not sure if they can do it that way. We used to run into this situation when we were playing Buffalo back in Miami. They continue to hand the ball to O.J. Simpson, and he gained five or six yards to carry, but valuable time was being lost. 
timeout down on the field gives us an opportunity to wish a happy 50th wedding anniversary to Harry and Hazel Herman of Roanoke, Virginia. They're having a party watching the game tonight in Roanoke. Harry attended Georgia Tech. Hazel's five brothers attended Virginia. Their grandson, James Salter, asked us to pass along the happy anniversary 50th for Harry and Hazel Herman of Roanoke, Virginia. I wonder if Harry's got the five brothers there. We have 2.47 remaining in this game. Georgia Tech with their 10-point lead, 31-21. to 21. College football is certainly pressure-packed, and these coaches take a lot of heat all the time. I know Curry's been through a lot, and uh, anybody that's a head coach goes through it. Welsh has been through it at Navy and at Virginia. Understand the primary objective here is to educate young men. You want to win as many football games as you can along the way, but you're trying to help some people grow up. What happens this year and next year is important, but what happens in the next 20 is even more important. There's a look at the Virginia Band Cavaliers. Third down two from the 18. This is Petty. Close to the first down. It'll depend on where they say he went out of bounds, right at the exact 20-yard line. It'll be close. Chain is right on the sideline, so they'll get a good view of it. Rutland, number 16, chased Petty out of bounds. It is a first down, Cavaliers. 2.42 to go in the game now. Bring the toss back into the sideline, so as he got the first down, he could step out of bounds, stop the clock. First down, 10, Cavaliers from the 20, slot left formation. Coming in motion, Nick Merrick. Shoots to throw now. Going long, looking for Billy Smith. Incomplete, batted down by 16, Reggie Rutland. The freshman defensive back from East Point, Georgia, with a good job of covering Billy Smith. Nice play by Rutland coming over the top. A difficult play to make without getting pass interference call. I think that was Ivory Lee. Wayne Schutz was getting a face full of Ivory Lee as he let it go. But you're going to see Rutland coming over the top and tipping that ball away. Excellently played. Second down, 10 Cavaliers. Clock ticking, 2.36 when they snap the ball. 31-21, Georgia Tech leading by 10. And off to Petty. Our tailback fooling the cameraman with some slick moves back there. And there you see Petty out to the 28-yard line. Pat Swilling with the tackle. Swilling playing, but he came in with tonsillitis. Our executive producer, Don Ellis. Producer, Michael Lardner. Director Mark Goldsmith. Done a great job tonight as usual. Associate producer Roe Backfish, who produces our All-American features at halftime. Here comes Petty again. Petty is hauled down at the 28-yard line. Ken Parker with the tackle. Associate director Joan Hagel. Technical director Bill Lance. With the crew who produces our football games, our primetime football unit manager Teresa Bush. Engineer in charge Cal Paulus. Derek Jenkins shaken up on the play. We're down to 159 remaining in this football game, and it looks like Georgia Tech is going to go to 2-7 and seven on the season as Virginia will fall to 5-4. and four. A couple of bowl scouts, we understand, were in here to watch Virginia tonight, so they'll be disappointed in their performance, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure that George Welsh is disappointed in their performance. You know, one of their goals this year was to try to win seven, win six or seven, and there he is instructing Wayne Schutz right there. Got a fine football mind, Welsh does. In, an intense individual, Bob, wasn't he? Very intense, and what a great career he's had, particularly when he was at Navy. I think that's where George Welsh made his fame in terms of national collegiate coaching recognition. Several bowl games while he was at Navy, and now he hopes to do the same with the Cavaliers. One thing that he brought up was uh, we talked about freshman eligibility. TBS Evening News immediately following the game with Don Miller. 159 to go. Fourth down. Shoots to throw over the middle. It is complete. Good catch in traffic. That's Billy Griggs, the tight end. He's a big pro type. 6'3", 240. He made a good snag there. Keeps the drive alive. Clock stops while they move the sticks and the chain up to the 40. Shoots. Just throws it out of bounds to stop the clock again. It'll be second down 10. That'll give Virginia time to regroup. 
Wayne Schutz really threaded that ball in there. Stuck it in between two Georgia Tech defenders. What he's doing now, he's getting several plays from the sideline. In the huddle, you call two or three plays. They don't waste any time regrouping. There's the story. Tech and TBS Super Neighbors. TBS headquarters here in Atlanta, right near Georgia Tech's campus. Shoots over the middle. Almost picked off by Westbrook. Tech's leading uh, interceptor at the 45. Westbrook had four interceptions coming into this game. Pass intended for Nick Merrick. Westbrook, what a leader he's been for Georgia Tech, the senior. He has, and he's playing back there with a couple of freshmen and a sophomore and people playing out of position. And he has been the leader, and he's kept them all calm out there and kept them relaxed and kept them progressing. Rob Horton, Georgia Tech's linebacker, is down, being attended to by Tech trainers. We also understand you saw earlier Derek Jenkins, the fullback for Virginia, going off, number 28. They, he got banged in the head. They're checking him for any kind of concussion damage, and we'll give you a report on Jenkins. Meanwhile, a look at the right leg, as you can see, of Rob Horton. What an important player he is. He has 10 tackles tonight. He and Roof are always around the ball for Georgia Tech. And as we mentioned earlier, just a quiet, unassuming individual that really possesses a lot of leadership ability. There's Derek Jenkins taking his shoulder pads off. He's had a fine game, both running the football and blocking for Howard Petty and Barry Word. Rob Horton, senior from Metter, Georgia, this team's leading tackler coming into this football game, and he'll no doubt stay there with his 10 tackles. And Coach Curry, Georgia Tech, had eight or nine, depending on whether you counted Lavette or not, starters from the original group at the fall injured coming into the night's game. Shoots, tries a screen, hits Word, has blockers. Word gets close to the first down, goes out of bounds right at the 50, chased out by 37 Sammy Lilly of Georgia Tech. Clock to 135 and stops there. So many things can happen in a minute and a half. This is a screen pass. They're trying to catch, catch Tech coming up field. Usually in a situation like this, though, the defense is rushing three people, has five people in those short zones, and three people deep. They say they did get the first down as the chain and sticks move forward. Georgia Tech leading by 10, a minute 35 to go. A big play could get this game pretty itchy for Tech's coach Bill Curry. Of course, he knows that it's only one play away from being and a point after from being only a three or two point game, depending. Shoots on first down. Rifles in. It is complete to 22. Merrick at the 40. Close to another first down. Sammy Lilly drove him out of bounds. Westbrook almost picking it off, but missing it. That's about as close as you can get without making the interception right off his fingertips, and if he would have caught the ball, obviously it's 60 yards the other way and a touchdown for Georgia Tech. Shoots, sets up, fires it. Westbrook almost make the play. Merrick hangs on. Good concentration by Nick Merrick. Second down, short yardage, just inches as a matter of fact. Here's Shoots. Screen right side to Word, incomplete, and probably wisely incomplete. Number five, Dante Jones came up to hit Word, but Word let it go, and he saved himself a loss. It'll be third down inches now. Clock down to 126, stopping with the incomplete pass. Tech leading Virginia by 10, closing moments of the ball game, and Virginia trying to keep it alive. 14 consecutive games on the road they've lost, and uh, 15 out of 16 from what I understand. Merrick splits wide to the left side. Billy Smith down here off your screen to the bottom on a third down and short. Shoots, wants to go over the middle. It is incomplete, almost picked off by Toby Lance, number 34, down there at the 25-yard line. So now it's going to be fourth down inches, and the Cavaliers, who had it second down, third down and inches, are going to have to worry about a fourth down. The Georgia Tech secondary had their ball, their hands on a ball several times. That was one for Toby. He hurt his hand. He's out of the game right now. Clock to 119. It'll start at the snap of the ball. Fourth down inches. Cavaliers probably try to just convert this first down. They hand it off to Word. He gets the first down and a little bit more as he slides in there to the 36. The clock will stop with 115 remaining while they move the sticks on the far side. Cavaliers not giving up. They've called two plays. They go up to the line of scrimmage without a huddle and are ready to snap the ball as you look at them work on Toby Lance 34. Ball thrown out of bounds. It'll be second down now for the Cavaliers. 
Masuts is a great athlete. He was a baseball player in high school, drafted out of college by a professional baseball team. Went to Colgate and Bennett, Virginia. This is his second year now, third year, redshirted the first year. It's thrown for over 200 times, uh, 200 yards, excuse me, four times this year. You saw the story. It's at the 36-yard line, second down, shoots. A lot of time, only a three-man rush for Tech. It is almost picked off by 16, Reggie Rutland. It was intended for 21, Billy Smith. I'd like to thank the sports information directors for Georgia Tech, Mike Finn, Mike Stamus, Cricket Yates for helping us with our preparation, Norman Airy, athletic director Homer Rice, and of course, coach Bill Curry and his staff. And at Virginia, at, uh, sports information director Rich Murray, athletic director Dick Schultz, and of course, coach George Welsh and his fine group of coaches. Everybody helping us with our information and preparation for this ACC game tonight. Third down, 10 from the third. 36 shoots. It is complete to Merrick down to the 16-yard line. Clock stops at 58 seconds remaining. Virginia has one timeout left. This is going to get interesting right here now. One thing you want to do is make sure you keep them in bounds. So you'd like to play everything a little bit to the outside. Nick Merrick is limping off the field on the far sideline. The man who caught the pass, only a slight limp. I have a feeling he might be back in there. They certainly need him. He's a consistent senior receiver, and he's a big guy. Kevin Ferguson, a freshman, comes in and replaces him, number 18, for this down. We'll see what happens. 55 seconds remaining in the game. Georgia Tech leads by 10, and now a timeout has been called. Georgia Tech's timeout, so Virginia still has one remaining. I think they had a little confusion with personnel. Oftentimes, when you're trying to get four rushing linemen in the game or five defensive backs, especially when your team's been decimated by injuries, things can get a little confusing. Right now, they're talking about how to throw it into the end zone three times. They got three shots at it. They want to get it into the end zone, get the ball back with one timeout left on an onside kick. There have been several exciting plays this year with regard to the onside kick. Real controversial play to, uh, in that North Carolina game. There's a story of the game visually for you. 55 seconds left and a 10-point spread in the game at the moment. Virginia hoping with one play to make it a closer ball game. And the Tech fans already celebrating their second victory here in the... 1983 season. They were one and seven coming into the game tonight. Second down, ten Cavaliers. Here shoots again over the middle. It's complete. That's Griggs. Touchdown, Virginia. Virginia has scored. There are no penalty markers down. 50 seconds to go in the game, and now it's 31, 27, and a worried look on the face of Coach Curry. Virginia goes on the quick count. Georgia Tech is blitzing the strong safety, Westbrook, and there seemed to be some confusion in the coverage. No one really covered Briggs, and he goes in for the touchdown. Now Virginia celebrating. <laughs> Those are members of the Virginia marching band. I forget the exact title of their band. It takes three paragraphs. They do have a good time and proudly say they have only one music major in their band. Double tight ends. Virginia going for two. Shoots, rolling, throwing. Incomplete, and that'll just about do it. Pass was intended for Billy Smith, and you got to admire the courage on the part of George Welsh. He did not want the one-point conversion and an opportunity for a, an onside kick and then a field goal to tie. He wanted a chance to win. He goes for it. Little play action, Billy Smith is lined up at tight end. He's their clutch receiver. The idea is just get it close to him. The ball just a few feet overthrown. Very tough pass for shoots, a real touch finesse kind of pass, and he couldn't quite make it on the mark. And George Welsh is going to look at a five and four record now. One thing's for sure, Bob, this Virginia team is a totally different team than we saw last year. Uh, he's got the program going in the right direction. They're displaying a lot of courage. They've got good people at the skilled position, and probably the strength of their team is, an offensive, is that offensive line. 
So the situation is this. 50 seconds remain in the football game. Georgia Tech now has a four-point, 31-27 lead. Of course, Virginia can still try to get that onside and score a touchdown in 50 seconds and even win the football game. And I'm sure the Cavaliers aren't throwing in the towel and are hoping to do that. Georgia Tech hanging on. Tech has been close or led in several games this year, but have lost late in the game due to fatigue with a lot of their young players and injury-riddled uh, football team, particularly defensively. We've got some nervous stomachs out there in the receiving team. Here's the onside kick. It must travel 10 yards before it's touched. It was touched before it traveled 10 yards. Let's see who's got it. I believe they're going to say it is Georgia Tech football. No signal yet. But the Georgia Tech players have signaled that it's their ball. I think the ball did not travel 10 yards. We might be able to tell when we look at the replay. It must travel 10 yards before it is a free ball. We have first touching by the kicking team before 10 yards. Receiver's ball, first and 10. Somebody from Virginia touched the ball there. Uh, Georgia Tech gets possession of football. 50 seconds left in the game. The valiant effort by the Cavaliers. I got to be honest with you. This is a better game than I expected to see, and a, a lot more offense than I so thought we'd see. Do you think, Bob? Absolutely. 31-27. The score. Both teams getting up near the 30-point mark when you get near 60 points in the game. You've got to say it's a high-powered offensive game. Dewberry keeps it. Clock ticks to 45-44. Virginia has one timeout left. They may or may not elect to use it. They decide to use it right now. It was a, really a decision as to when they would use it. Stop the clock at 40 seconds. It'll be second down and about 11 for Georgia Tech when we come back. You have to tip your hat to John Dewberry, a transfer from the University of Georgia, filled in for Stu Rogers for Georgia Tech when Rogers was injured earlier in the year. He's only a sophomore from Milton High School in Alpharetta, Georgia, and what a job he is doing. He is getting better game by game. Unquestionably, and I think tonight he threw the ball more to the outside than he ever has. Georgia Tech had a fine game plan in terms of running the football. Motion seemed to throw off the Virginia defense a little bit, but the key was Dewberry's ability to throw the ball and make the Virginia secondary cover folks. Look at all that yardage that's been amassed tonight. Really equal yardage-wise. 911 total yards, our computer brain Rohan Backfish, the associate <laughs> producer tells me. <laughs> Georgia Tech hasn't turned the ball over tonight, which has been a, a key factor in this game for the Yellow Jackets. And Newberry's going to fall on it again, and now the clock will just tick down. Tech is supposed to get a playoff in 25 seconds, but of course, even if they don't elect to do that, there'd be a flag and they'd still just fall on the ball, so we'll see what happens. But Bill Curry, you must feel good for that young man, the outstanding involvement in the community here in Atlanta, Georgia. I know my wife and I have some involvement on some charity uh, adventures with the Currys, Carolyn, Bill, and his wife, and uh, he's trying so hard to build a winning program at Georgia Tech, and this is one more small step in that direction. Tech gets their second victory of the 1983 season. And Coach Bill Curry gets to walk across the field and say congratulations from the right side of the scoreboard for the second time this year. A good ball game, 31-27. Georgia Tech defeating Virginia at Grant Field in Atlanta.